First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. No doubt. Playtime is over. And you back once again with First World Order Radio. Dr. Aline Bay, your host. As well as also, we can bring on our co-host, Brother Fahim L. Are you here, brother? Peace, God. How you doing tonight? Peace, God. How you doing tonight? We're doing well. We're doing well. Once again, we back. Brother Panic is here once again. We're going to be questioning and answering tonight. So make sure y'all call in. It's 626-414-3535. That's 626 626- 414-3535. Make sure y'all give us a call because we're going to be going through all of your thoughts tonight. Um, so anything dealing from esoteric, metaphysical, to occult, to Kabbalah, to whatever the case is, give us a call. Once again, 626-414-3535. All right, we're going to go to the phone lines. Once again, we're going to bring on Brother Panic. You here, brother? Yes, sir. Hey, Brother Lean, Brother L. How's it going? Well, very well, God. Nice. How you doing? Good to hear, good to hear, everything's everything. I'm going to also tonight give out a whole bunch of rituals, picking up where we left off um, for the new year before we get into Q&A like we did. Um, You know, welcome to New World Order. Our mystery system, our Wednesday mystery system is going on as always. It's going to be I'm going to give a shout-out. Last week we talked about some of the failings of uh, 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 correspondence I get, you know, in terms of this conscious plight, this conscious mentality you're supposed to have. So, you know, I do want to also leave it on a good note. There's a sister who gave me a story last week, um, probably seen on Facebook, named uh, Raquita Gray. And, you know, she was talking about a meditation now. I always hear, you know, I'll, I'll hear a certain amount of stories, and really people are, it's really a subtle way of people trying to explain to me what it is they know, and and really at the at my heart is, you know, I really don't care. So they, they, it's something they know, something they discovered, and they mask it by trying to say I should do a show on it. So I'm like, well, why should I do a show on it? And they and they give me a whole paragraph about how special this particular deity or this particular subject is. And I say, well, blog talk is free. Why don't you do a show on it? Why are you waiting for me? But then I'll get that special person 
that um, has no ego or doesn't call themselves any title, let's just say that, and they'll tell me about the experience. Either I've read or done the experience, and this person is explaining to me the same experience or a similar experience that they tapped into without being conscious that they were going for it, which makes it more authentic. So this is one of those stories where she told me about a particular meditation that I know she never heard before, but it's pretty much a strong one. And it's it's one where you walk down a staircase in your mind and you spiral down. Now, I know this to be a fact because it's one of the ones I would do, and then you would come across a light. But oddly enough, you'll get a feeling that that's not the light that you're seeking. You go deeper, then you find then you'll find there's a more faint light. Cause, and what the difference is, it's the light of your soul versus astral light. And she, what she said without knowing was she felt it wasn't the destination when she seen the first light kept going. And when she got there, she came across an entity. The entity gave her a name and told her, you may know him as Rasputin, which was an old school occultist, which right. she also never heard of before. She had to go and look it up after a fact. That's when you know the channels are authentic. And usually, like I said, there's different levels of channel. There's certain channels that are obvious, and there's certain deities, and I've noticed to be a fact by experiencing it, you'll talk to, and they will give you information that you cannot find in books, that, that it's, you, you know it's authentic because you can authenticate it, feel it, and, and it, it makes so much sense but it's something that you haven't consciously focused or studied or hasn't been on the planet for a while. So she got in contact with this deity, and, you know, she told me, uh, you know, a few, a few, few uh, about an hour's worth of stories that uh, how it was life-changing, enlightening, all the things that you would hope that would happen when you make contact with a higher being, and, it, you know, which is just basically a good story, something that changed her life without her trying to do it or titling herself as anything. Just by basically her doing the work, experimenting on her own. And that's the key here. We're talking about self. We're talking about experimenting on your own. I had another conversation with a friend who's been listening to lectures from the start, Kiana, and she explained what she felt was happening now and what, she was, and what was happening before. Before, when I would lecture, I was a little bit more coarse with people. And everyone's saying, not just how everyone's saying that I'm being a little bit more sweet these days. Well, I would say because uh, I've changed over because my patience level is, 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 I'm in a different patience level, especially since I started doing the class. And I explained to her, well, they was a little bit scared of me because they didn't know me back then. But these are people who know me now. So the, the, uh, the, the image has slowed down. And even before, there would be a whole group of new people. And so I would always have to address new people. And you could tell this constantly by the questioning. So I'm going to have to go somewhere in between, be a little bit more coarse in, when I'm hearing these questions that you can fucking find on Google. We are not asking me Google questions. Do not waste my fucking time. Huh. Don't ask, don't say I want to be a cripple or blood, then ask me the difference between a cripple or blood. That shit's not gonna fly. It doesn't make any sense. Don't tell me a book is deep, then ask me or Aline to break down the book. That means you didn't read the fucking book. You know what I'm saying? You need to go back to the cat in the hat. We're gonna right. stop playing with each other. You need to bite off what you understand because ultimately this is your plight. You do not need anyone to preach to you. You do not need anyone to tell you what life choice to make. My name is not fucking Alanya Van Zant. My name is Panic. I'm a metaphysician and an occultist. And what I'm trying to teach you to do is how to be self-sufficient. So we need to change the mentality. Even if you're asking a question that somehow is a life choice, you need to understand the only thing you can get from me is information to make a life choice for yourself. Don't ask me if you should be a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout. It's a waste of your time, and it's a waste of my time. So we, to be absolutely honest with you, 
I need to talk to you this way so you can step up your game. I'm here to, for you to step up your game. I'm not here to entertain you. And you shouldn't be here just for entertainment purposes. You should be here trying to go to the next level. This shit here is about evolution. Exactly. And it's about self-evolution. So there's nobody can, not, can do it for you. This shit is as basic as the matrix. I can show you all the doors, Neo, but you have to walk through them. Neo has to believe. So you have to be able to believe in yourself, believe in what it is you're getting and in your decision. That's the only person you have to convince. I'm only here to help you guide. Brother Aleem is here to help you guide. Brother L is here and everyone else. Brother L, everyone is here to help guide you but not do it for you. So before we get into these questions, we want to know how I, I wouldn't even play you. It's taking away your path. You need to understand that. Each person I told to kiss my ass usually comes back later and says, I thank you for telling me that because it put me in a position to find out for myself. And now I know how to do it myself. I don't have to rely on you or anybody else to tell me how to live my life. There's nothing more respectful than that. So yet again, I'm going to because I'm still getting questions that don't make no sense. You know what I mean? It, it, <laughs> you ask me to do shows that oh shit, I ain't never heard about. Forget, they're like, look, forget the mother. Talk about wayward tantric. I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's some shit that you know. And, it, and it, why would you want me to talk about some shit that you know already? You know what I'm saying? So it, it doesn't make any sense. So. So, like I said, this is if you could if you could find it in your heart to do your own fucking work, I would be so fucking proud. You get a gold star for the day. All right. So, what we're gonna do first? I'm gonna put on these fucking glasses and act like I'm intelligent. And we're gonna I'm gonna give out some rituals or more rituals. That we could tap into various things in our lives to control. These, these are mostly herbs that you could get. Listen closely. Two things. Don't eat. Don't email me later asking what was that thing you said. Refer back to this or get a pen or a paper now. So if you didn't hear it, this is the only place you're going to hear it. I'm not sitting there. Type you a whole goddamn ritual out that I've already spoken. on. Um, this is what you want to write down first. Primarily, one of the best places on the web to get your herbs is mountainroseherbs.com. Mountainroseherbs.com. About 85% of the herbs that I'm going to say you can get out, you can get there or some... Or, or, or from the supermarket. Now, some of these uh, herbs, they go by what they call folk names. And folk names are just the, the basically the street names for them. So you won't know how to order them through Mountain Road Herbs. But the good news is the Encyclopedia of Herbs by Scott Cunningham, he, he listed folk names and matched them up with their uh, technical name. So if you come across a folk name, like for instance, this, you need something called gravel root. And um, let me see if they tell you the, the what it is. It's just known as gravel root. Now, if I was to look in Scott Cunningham's book, look up gravel root, it'll tell me it's it's basically it'll tell me its name where you can order it at mountainroseherbs.com. So. Pay attention to that because that's where you're going to get a lot of these items if you can't just get it at the supermarket. So for the first one, you want something called gravel root, um, G-R-A-V-E-L root. It said to help those seeking employment, um, bathe, make a tea out of it, bathe um, before you go and look for a job, carry it in a red flannel bag when you're going on your interview. And this particular root, helps you attract a job. When, you, when they say make it as a tea, they're basically saying boil about a gallon of it, um, let it cool, and, and then bathe in it. Okay, uh, let's do another one. Poppy seeds. Now, poppy seeds you can get at a supermarket. 
Um, when seeking to confuse someone, first describe their name on a brown candle, mix poppy seeds with confusion oil. Now, you've got to find your botanica either in your neighborhood or online, a botanica, on your neighbor, in your neighborhood or online. Google it. That's what the shit is for. And, and worst case scenario, if there's not one online, if you can't get it on uh, Amazon or find one in your area, you will be able to find one online. Some of these things that they sell exclusive, exclusively in there, and there are books which I will give out on how to make your own oil. So I'm going to give you the base oils and so on and so forth. So confusion oil mixed with poppy seeds and rub into the candle during the full moon while saying a prayer to dominate your enemy. Now, we brought this up before. I like to factor in moon phases. But if something's an emergency, fuck the moon phase. But for the most part, um, to work with um, the energy, the moon, you can get a book on moon phases and, uh, and follow that flow. If you need a book, there's a book called Moon Spells, How to Use the Phases of the Moon to Get What You Want by Diane, and her last name is spelled A-H-L-Q-U-I-S-T, and she goes into a bunch of moon spells. She, she breaks down waning, waxing, full, and uh, in dark moon, and what you can do at those particular times if you're in the moon magic. But my policy has always been if, if the moon is working with you, excellent. If not, then you need to do what you need to do. Sometimes you have to just do it at that moment, do it at that moment. All right, another thing you can do, let's see, I've got these things marked. Um, rue. There is a herb called rue. You can get this at Mountain Rose Herbs, probably one of the most powerful uh, uh, herbs you can do for cleaning and clearing uh, your aura. So if you need help functioning mentally, after a quarrel with your lover, and the scent of rue will help clear your mind. Rue brewed into a tea and poured in your bath water is said to be effective in breaking the influence of any hex or curse that has been cast upon you. So rue breaks curses. You want rue in your life. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Where were we at? All right, let's try this. All right. Uh, there's something called star um, anise. You can get star anise at the super. You can get at mountainroses.com, but this is something you can get at a supermarket as well. You can get the crushed anise, but then there's something called star anise. It looks like stars. Um, right. You can also get from my website for the panels. We also have those herbs. Say again. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. So listen closely. The first place you need to check for these herbs is DrAleemLBay.com um, because you know you're going to get a good luck and you're going to uh, uh, get a good uh, discount and you're going to get quality herbs. So um, that's good to know that y'all can go to DrAleemLBay.com and get these things as well. So it makes life easier for y'all. All right? So see him. And I'm sure, I'm sure there a lot of these things he can get if he's too busy or, or, or so on and so forth. But excellent. That's good. I'm glad you can do that. So now with the star anise, A-N-I-S-E, you place a bowl of star anise on your altar or where you're doing your rituals. This will purify and help increase the power, um, the recruit, increase the power. Renew each week. So whatever it is you're doing, if you just add a, a bowl of this star anise to whatever it is you're doing, it will increase the power. You can also carry to bring good luck. Um, you could burn the seeds as an incense to help increase psychic powers. Yes, star anise powder is one of the things in the herb pack, and that's all you're going to get out of me on that one. All right. Moving on. Um Valerian. Um, I don't know if you probably could get it from a lean, but there's something called Valerian root. All right. right. So 
wrap the valerian root in a picture of your mate and and then wrap that in tin foil to stop quarreling or fighting carry for 3 days and then throw it under into some running water to find a stream or something going in cause an enemy to wreck or have a bad luck in his car use responsibility motherfuckers simply hide the valerian root in the glove compartment uh, to bring peace to your home by brewing this root as a tea and sprinkling around your premises. Drink the tea to soothe your nerves. Valerian root is something I drink all the time to take my ass to bed. And we know it, we know it for that use, basically. But uh, I'd say you, can, you just heard what we can use it, else we can use it for. Um, violet leaves. Um, if you can get it from a lean or maybe work something out. Um, it's actually from the plant violet. You want to take the leaves, pin four leaves in the form of a cross, and put it in your shoe. This will give you the power to force others to do your bidding. This is some real backward shit. <laughs> real here. Real backward shit. <laughs> there's, there's something called willow bark. Willow bark. If you can't get it from a lean, first try him. Uh, Aleem L. Bay dot com, and uh, if you can't get it from him, then Mountain Rose Herbs. Willow Bark, like I said, it sounds like one of those folk names. So you want Scott Cunningham's book on herbs to get the uh, true name of Willow Bark. If it, it might just be Willow Bark, though, I don't know. Uh, you want to burn during black magic rituals to call the aid of Satan. And basically, there's no guy named Satan who's going to show up like Jesus, but they're talking about a polarity or an energy um, that you're tapping into. Um, uh, a feminine is really just feminine negative polarity that you're tapping into, downward spiraling energy that you're pulling up and starting to control, which is basically cosmic energy that you're bringing to yourself. That's what Willow Bark would do. Wormwood. Wormwood, um, you may be able to get that from Aleem. Um, but what you can yep. do is burn it, burning your home to remove any hexes or curses. Wormwood is burnt as an incense to call upon spiritual guides, guides for assistance. So if you call in on assistance, burn wormwood and call on that spirit. Burn to bring spirits of the dead back to cast hexes on those you wish to harm. Again, something else you should use with caution or use responsibly, responsibly, I would say. All right. Keep going. To attract a new lover. All right. So this is a combination to attract a new lover. Again, these are herbs that you have to collect. See, see what, see what uh, Aleem, Dr. Aleem com has. If not... Uh, you know, speak elsewhere. But this this is a bath. This bath will make you feel more alive and attractive, and the op- opposite sex will notice. You need lavender, rose petals, jasmine, orange flowers, ruta, star anise, and myrtle. Mix all the herbs together. Use one-seventh of the mixture in one quart of hot water in the tub each day for seven days straight. After each bath, dust your body with orris root powder. And that'll attract some new shit in your life. Here's a love attraction incense, something that you can burn pretty easy. Um, you need rosemary, lavender, rose petals, eucalyptus, and sandalwood. Use those in a combination. You burn that on some charcoal, and you'll, uh, uh, it's a love and attraction incense. So it'll charge your aura with the ability to attract a sweetie boo. Um, a holy trinity incense to, to clean all types of jinx It's called frankincense mirror But we know the frankincense and mirror But add sandalwood to it So frankincense mirror and sandalwood If you burn that in the house It clears out the house Uh This is something that removes evil from the houses, jinxes, or curses around you. Um, it seems like this is stuff you'd probably be able to get from uh, from 
Dr. Lean. Uh, you need garlic skins, rosemary, sandalwood, eucalyptus, cinnamon, and star anise. You burn it together, clears out the house. All right. Um, one second. All right, this is some. This is you, if you want to bring money on a power level, if you really fucked up, you got to cut a small hole on the, on the top of a nutmeg. So it's not the ground nutmeg, it's the actual nutmeg nut. You got to get that and figure out how to get a hole in there. You got to place mercury in that hole. Now, mercury is now hard to get, and even in thermometers now, it's not real mercury anymore. The only place I was able to find mercury for spiritual work, because it does come up a lot, mercury as an element, whatever you add to it makes things happen faster, um, are botanicas, and they consider it illegal. But um, hmm. botanicas are botanicas. you got to see what you can get. And um, melt a green candle over it to the uh, hole is covered and sealed, and when you're done, just carry it with you. So that just depends on if you can get mercury. Um, here's a money attracting bath that you could do if you're not going to get one from me and you want to put something together real quick for yourself because I know you niggas is broke. Hopefully, if you do the money attracting bath, it's enough for you to get a damn herb pack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you get a damn herb pack. <laughs> Help a nigga out. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you want to use peppermint. Yeah, help a nigga out. And this is some this 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 stuff I'm sure you should be able to get from a lean site because this is pretty simple. I'm trying to give you all the most simplest items to collect, which is in this particular bath for money attraction is peppermint, mirror, sandalwood, frankincense, and rosemary. So you can um, use it as a bath or a floor wash, sprinkle the powder in your home or your business, mix, and those are the following ingredients that you mix. Um, another one to attract money um, is benzene, um, which you, you you can get that pretty easy. Um, benzene usually come in rock form. We may be able to get that for you. Frankincense, sandalwood, saltpeter, um, and mirror saltpeter is just another thing. We may be able to get that. If you can't get that, you should be able to find it around somewhere. And let's see. Okay, uh, we did this. We did, yeah, well, here's one more to attract a new lover. Um, and it'll make you more appealing. I don't think I gave this one out. The sage, peppermint, star anise, lavender, rose petal, and safflower. Mix all the herbs in two quarts of water and boil, strain in a jar. Use about half a cup per bath, bathe for five days. That'll get you some new, new dick or pussy. All right. <laughs> now, going to keep on going. This, These rituals here, Apollo rituals, my niggas. These are some long lost tribe with your bad ass <laughs> rituals that I'm going to give out that people haven't seen in a long time. Now, this one is called Breaking Glass Bells. You have to visualize anger, ha- hatred, and all other bad emotions into a glass. So now, th- these type of rituals. Together. These type of rituals, um, you have to visualize more. These are a little bit more. The, the ones I just gave out are more of the backwoods uh country nigga rituals since I'm from the country now. These particular rituals are more, you need more of your mind. You need more of your mind and you need more visualization. You'll notice because these are the darker, these are the darker rituals. So you need to visualize hatred and anger and all other bad emotions. That's called like an emotional transfer. Um, so you want to transfer whatever you got going on, whatever your definition of hate, 
at these images and see it going into that particular glass, this object. Make sure you're back far enough to where you don't get hit. Hurl the glass into a wall or on the floor as hard as possible. And breaking the glass is like uh, transferring the the hate or the, the emotion into that object and destroying it. Another ritual you could do on that level is a cleansing ritual with food. You could take old food in that's in your refrigerator that you just throw away anyway and rub it close to your body where you see all the negativity flowing into this older food and you just throw the food away into nature. Or you could do it with a fresh loaf of bread and see it absorbed into the bread and go feed birds. And that gets rid, that gets rid of uh, uh, certain, you know, negative energy. But you have to be able to focus your mind, which isn't really that hard to do that. Now, um, let's keep going. Ooh, damn, boy, I can't even see no more. All right, so where are we at? Okay. Okay. All right, so let's see another one. All right, spell to to one uh, spell to get rid of a spirit. So, because I hear this all the time, that there's a spirit on me in panic. What is there's a spirit, and what is the spirit? Well, here's a ritual to get rid of one. You have to say things as well. Say what is uh, what is dark will be filled with light. Remove the spirit from my sight before starting up. Um, before starting, place with your hand before you start uh, the flow of power out your hand and say the words. So you, you, you're moving your hand over your body as you're saying the words, letting the envi- uh, you're envisioning a blue light um, from your power from your power hand, which means if you're a righty or a lefty, fill the room or house or any other place you may be. So you're cleansing yourself with a blue light basically while you say that mantra. Now, they usually suggest a mantra or the type of mantra, or, or they're trying to show you where they're trying to go with the mantra. But um, you could, if you feel there's a stronger mantra that comes to mind, by all means, go ahead. This, this spell will make an enemy move. If there's an enemy living near you, you need them out or out your fucking house. Um, this is, they suggest do it during a waning moon, right on the white parchment paper, and a parchment paper, as I explained, is easy to get. They're in the supermarket right next to the aluminum foil and the ceram wrap. One of those choices is actually parchment paper. Um, write the full name of a person with the move along with the birth date if it's known. Roll the paper with a photo if you have one. Place inside a bottle of vinegar and toss into a body of running water. Visualize your enemy moving away as the bottle is washed away. All right. A magic spell to banish negative thoughts. Draw a picture of yourself with the negative thoughts affecting you. Uh, And you could draw like a black cloud uh, or your own interpretation of how it's affecting you. So whatever you think is affecting you, you need to symbolize it in a picture around you by drawing it. Charge a red candle with healing energy. And when they say charge a candle, they're talking about the same energy transference. They're talking about you taking what you need to happen in your mind and send it, send it psychically over to the object. So you charge it with healing energy, light it, and hold the tip of the picture in the flame. After it's lit, drop it into the cauldron or drop it over the candle so it can finish burning. Now, with the red candle still burning, draw another picture of yourself without the negativity. Place it under the red candle and let it burn out, and then you're done. Magic spell to banish poverty. The moon should be dark or waning. You should perform this on uh, Saturday. Take seven sheets of toilet paper and write, I banish poverty on each sheet. Flush them down the toilet saying, I banish poverty. But each one do this every day uh, from the full moon uh, to the dark moon. So from the full of the dark, you just, like I said, this is all about making up your mind. You know, these are a little bit more complex than just the backyard shit. So, a uh, magic spell to banish illness. Handful of salt. Cast the salt into the flames of a fire. The flames will turn blue. Gaze into the blue flame as much as, uh, with as much feeling and imagination as you can muster 
visualize the illness leaving uh, you or the person while chanting sickness burn, great good health return. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going here. Okay. Here's some candle interpretations. These Apollo candle interpretations. So whenever you light a, a candle, you're lighting up a color frequency and a, vibra- a vibration. So these are the decoded vibrations. Red, that's a passion, energy, power, strength, courage, a- achievement, magnetism, counteract, fatigue, and anger. Orange, attraction, motivation, mental en- energy, clear thinking, harmony, expansion, happiness. Yellow, communication, mental clarity, healing, Cooperation, friendship, business, success, prosperity, reduces fevers, stops nervousness. Green, money, balance, promotions, job finding, fertility, prosperity, and brotherly love. Light blue, peace, calm, healing, relieve stress, friendship, hope, meditation, decision-making, emotional balance. Royal blue, truth, truth, self-awareness, dreams, protection, removes guilt, protection from negative vibes. Purple, intuition, power, spiritual communication, influences those high in high positions. Brown, endurance, stability, home, security, materialization, court. Black, remove place, uh, removes of places, removes or, or places, hexes, negativity, ha- uh, hatred, and evil spells. All depends on your focus. See, black is one of those things is how you focus it, not just naturally evil um, is whatever you focus because it's the void of color, therefore it's the void of a frequency until you place one on it. White, protection, meditation, blessing, purity, health, spiritual growth, gray, neutralizing, stop stress, masking, veiling, and hesitation. Lavender, spiritual development, psychic growth, divination, blessing, sensitivity. Pink, emotional love, Romances, new loves, come to me, friendships, gold, solar energy, power, physical strength, success, achievement, and mental growth. So it was a candle breakdown. One other breakdown, if you can find it, magenta, which is purple and red mixed together, which encompasses the whole spectrum of the uh, chakras, red to purple. It's very rare if you can get a magenta candle, but um, you can do a lot with that. Um, it's another book. I should have pulled it out where they go into detail about it. But if you could get a magenta candle, it's one of the most powerful and it's very neutral in terms of what you can do with it. So you try to light it up, see what happens. All right, so bath for protection and purification. Steep one teaspoon of dry basil in a cup of boiling water. Leave it for five minutes and then let it strain. Add the liquid to your bath to bring a protective and cleansing influence. This herbal bath is particularly useful to get rid of to, to rid oneself of negativity feelings left by contact with those who are controlling. If you felt you were controlled or some shit happened that was out of order, get a negativity bath. Um, get this partic- that particular bath going, and uh, you know you can clear yourself of it of of that control. All right, let's see. All right, let me go to something else. All right, now that was we're gonna. I want to give out a few Dominican things. And then we're gonna go to Q and A. Okay, what I want to give you is what they call base oils, because you'll find that you need to make a lot of oils. Or whatever, so you need a base oil, and then to the base oil, you add the essential oil. To be clear, I definitely know a lean sells candles. So, if you're having problems with candles, that's where you go for candles. Go to his website. And, and now, what a base oil is if, when they say you need to anoint candles, you're using oils for whatever purpose. You got to, there's a book by Paula Solomon, Helping Yourself with Magical Oils A to Z. It goes through all the names, all the folk names. Most of these names you can, most of these oils you find at botanicas. And you may find an oil that's interesting if you Google and search hard that tell you 
the essential oil combination or the herb you can use to make it yourself. So because you can get herbs more readily, if you to make cinnamon oil, what, what you would do is you would take cinnamon and use it in a base oil, put it in the sun, and eventually um, it will extract from the cinnamon, and that base oil will become cinnamon oil. So here's, here's a list of the base oils. There are various types of base oil that you can use for a magical voodoo oil lamp or or just to anoint. Um, below are a few examples of the most common base oils that can be used depending on the type of spiritual request that you will be posit- of, of petitioning spirits for. So, number one base oil, coconut oil, for uncrossing rituals and for protection spells. Number two, mineral oil, used for overcoming obstacles. So you would... So if you had to overcome an obstacle, you would use mineral oil plus the essential oil that you're trying to go in the direction. So the base is overcoming obstacles, but within overcoming the obstacle, there may be obstacle of love, maybe obstacle of a job, maybe obstacle of a child, obstacle of a home, where those things uh, change and become variants. That's the essential oil that you would use to that base oil, mineral oil. Number three, olive oil, used in lamps for healing, blessing, money, drawing, and success. So you need prosperity, olive oil, anything prosperous. Motor oil, used in black magic spells, revenge, and hexing. Castor oil, used in lamps uh, for coursing, hexing, revenge, and domination. Sweet almond oil, used in lamps for gambling, love, money, drawing, Palm oil for drawing and honoring the ancestors and spirits. That's your oil bases right there. All right. This is magical oils, perfumes, and powders, basically. So you'll find in Botanicas, they have Aries oil. That's for leadership. Taurus oil, security and stability. Gemini oil, oil, communication. Cancer oil. Uh, compassion, intuition, Leo oil, positive thinking, Virgo oil, attra- uh, attention to detail, Libra oil, uh, balance, charm, and beauty, Scorpio, uh, ambition and clairvoyance, Sagittarius uh, for progress, Capricorn, occult knowledge, Aquarius, inventive and humanitarian, Pisces, sensitivity and compassion, uh, Sun, uh, there's Sun oil. Where to anoint candles for healing and attracting money. Moon oil to bring about a slow, gradual change in protection. Mercury to promote concentration, meditation, communication. Venus for love and for friendship. Mars gives individual energy, courage, and power. Uh, Ju- Jupiter for faith, improvement of finances. Saturn to gain success in business and court. Uranus promotes ki- quick change in luck. Neptune, spiritual growth and healing. Pluto transforms and releases individuals from bondage. So now you have a base on zodiac and, and planetary influences in terms of uh, oils. All right. We're going to keep going. We're almost done. We're going to get to Q&A. All right. Um, so once you get the magical oil base, the formula, here's the example of how to use it. Um, so you use a cup of the appropriate base oil. And, of course, we're choosing from the list that we talked about before. Seven drops from the essential oil. So whatever essential oil you're going to use, you use seven drops to each cup of base oil. You can also add herbs or other ingredients, depending on the uh, recipe that you're doing. Mix gel, mix well say whatever invocation to whatever spirit that you that you're using this for or going to work with place the finished blended oil into a glass bottle and place your altar and place on your altar until you're ready to use it now one of the one of the best she makes florida water oils is mom congo which is jerry miller's wife so if you you know if you're going to contact him for the Oregon, and you can also contact her, and she makes oil combinations as well. 
like I said, or you might just want to do it yourself. You have the option. All right. Um, let's see where we at. We're almost done. I just want to show you people ask for bath salts, a basic bath for bath salt. You can make your own spiritual bath salt. You need a cup of, cup of culture rock salt, a cup of Epsom salt, a cup, two cups of, no, I'm sorry, one cup of culture rock salt, three cups of Epsom salt, two cups of baking soda, and four tablespoons of your desired spiritual oil. You just mix all together. Of course, put it on your altar, leave it on your altar for 24 hours before you use it in the bath. All right? And let's see. We're going to stop here. And that's all we're doing for like reading anymore. So we're going to, so now you have a bunch of little tricks and tips and shit that you can do, play around with for little earthly things, little earthly strides, getting, you know, to get you some titties sucked, you know what I'm saying, get your goddamn car note straight. There's a, little, a lot of little things you can do, shit that people ask me all the time. A lot of little tricks. You can do the backwood tricks. Get the ingredients to the backwood tricks. Or if you feel you're on the next level where you can invoke shit in your mind, you can do the second portion of the rituals I gave you. You have a lot of base information here. Another good bath is anything with coffee. So if you just take coffee grounds, sit your ass in the tub, that'll, that'll clean you off if you can't deal with the salt. Rosemary is another thing that's a good substitute if you can't deal with salt. Um, based upon high blood pressure or whatever. So uh, we're going to go to the Q&A, and I hope you guys wrote that down. I'm going to download and use it as tips and tricks. This is shit that I know works. I've either done it or or used it from sources of people who have done it you know, or used these elements in one way or another at a certain point and got results. So we're talking about shit that works. So we let me go to Q and A and we're All right, you're gonna go to Q and A and for those who are interested to call in, six two six four one four thirty five thirty five that's six two Four one four thirty five thirty five. The first number up the bat is the five one two. Area code five one two. You're on the line. Oh, peace, God Alim. Peace, uh, peace, brother Penny, and peace to hey, peace. brother L. Peace. Hey, uh, this is love, brother. this is brother Michael, uh, calling from Austin, Texas. I've been on the show before. Hey, I wanted before, to say, uh, brother Panic. Uh, Basically, I understand, you know, about the whole I think, you know, because, uh, I mean, I grew up, you know, in the Nintendo area, so, like, the whole I think, um, the I, I get it. Yeah, like, yeah, like, basically your eyes, you know, like, don't see things far away from you and shit like that. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I was going to say. I was okay. gonna say goji berry is the best um, that I've oh, found okay. for that. Okay. To, to kind of. Uh, okay. Yeah, basically that you know you can make it in a cereal or whatever you know, right. or you could yeah. But the best for the okay. eyes. But I just wanted to help you on that because you know we okay. can't have <laughs> we can't have our number one occultist. Going blind and shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Well, no, I don't think I don't think it's that serious. That's that. Well, it comes from all this reading. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I know. Uh, so, so I mean, you know, I didn't play Donkey yeah. Kong like that. <laughs> no, <I know. laughs> but I do appreciate. Yeah. I do appreciate that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. Like uh, I've been using um, uh, the Black Current in the um, so that's been doing it. But yeah, you know, I'll do anything. I don't care. So yeah, I'll try. That, that, that sounds good. Helps. I appreciate that. No problem. Appreciate um, it. Any questions? Well, basically, could I just? I think this would help a lot of the people, you know, basically listening on the show. Um, you know, basically, when I started uh, my path, I really wasn't necessarily that confident, and 
I wasn't really looking within. I wasn't. I mean, I would talk to shit, but I wasn't really doing. I was doing it, but I wasn't necessarily doing the practices that actually produces the results. Right. But now that, like, I understand that, I understand it's all about within, and I understand, you know, your intention about, you know, basically looking within. Because nobody's going to give you a better realization than the light that you actually get when you look within. Like, no matter how many oracles you go to or whatever, so... I want to say I definitely appreciate that because you're definitely uh, somebody that inspired me in my work. And of course, Brother Aleem and everybody. So, um, yeah, yeah, no question. That's good. Uh, well, everything, much. Is, everything is a process. So usually everyone goes that. There's a, the beginning stages is you need to gather information. And those are usually through books and through lectures. And then there's a certain point where that information just is filled. You know, you got to try something. So, so it's it's a process, you know what I mean? It's, it's not really bad. It's only bad if you get stuck there, you know. Right. What I mean? After a certain but I mean, I don't time. have to make. Yeah, I mean, I don't have to make like status messages on Facebook or every time I right. do some shit. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, uh, that's that's you, you you grow beyond that, and that's the whole point. You know, everyone grows beyond that because it becomes. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you're going for self-realization, and then you realize you don't need anybody around you to co-sign or to agree with your reality. That's when you're on your path. Exactly. Because right. uh, when, um, you, when, when you had a place where you could just have to convince yourself. Exactly. So I just wanted to say I definitely appreciate um, your work and everything you've done because um, it's definitely inspired me. So. Good. No questions, but just pretty much realizations, you know, and appreciation. Good. Well, keep on, keep up the good work, then, brother, and we'll talk soon. Okay, no doubt. All right, peace, man. Thanks, All right, peace, peace, brother. All right, we're gonna go to area code three four seven. Area code three four seven. We know that's New York, so peace. Hello. Peace. Sister. Peace. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 I must have. Wow. I'm. I must have did it right this time because the last time I um, because the last time I was listening to you guys' radio station, I must have. I must have came. I I tried to go early and then I um I hung up and then I came back on again and I was like probably like the last last last. So I really didn't get a chance to you know even answer you know ask some of my questions. But I'll try to make it simple. Um. Hello, brother Panic. How are you? Hey. What's going on? Nothing much. I know I know I bug you a little bit on Facebook, but it's because like, you know, I have questions and you know, the only time I can really catch you is on the radio, so you know, here I am. And I Who is this? Oh yeah, and Who is um this? I Who is this? What happened? Who is this? This is celebrity Alexandra Michelle. Ebony Alexandra Michelle. Yes, I'm a friend of yours on Facebook. I'm the I'm the hairstylist and I'm the um, cosmetologist. Um, we I just got to actually send you a message before you know you did your radio show. I was what, like, what, I was, which, which, which which Ebony? The one we took the two Ebony took uh-huh. my class. You took the class. You took the class. Which Ebony is this? No, 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 no. I I didn't I didn't take any of your classes, but I did inquire. It was about seventy five Ebony, <laughs> but. I'm, but, no, my name my name is not Ebony. My name is Alexandra. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, well, what's going on? Okay, well, um, like I said, I know you got callers behind you, so I'm just gonna make this. Remember, I had asked you about um, remember I had asked you about trees and meditating with trees and stuff like that. No. Well, I had right. asked you a question. Uh-huh. I had, I had um I had sent you a message via Facebook in regards to meditation and trees. How do you feel about that? It's, I mean, it's great. You know what I mean? Like I don't. Is there detail in the question? Like I, I don't get why you're asking. You can meditate for whatever. So I mean, okay. Because well, because uh, I, I I guess I get nervous talking to you because I know I know you don't like a whole lot of crap. Like you know. At, you know, people asking super questions and stuff, so it's like but, I'm I mean, I'm just to... saying, get get to get to the question is what I'm saying. Like, we, we what's up? Okay. Um, 
I meditate with trees a lot. And, you know, mm-hmm. I have this kind of like this, how can I, how can I ask, how can I ask this question? Um, I meditate with trees a lot, but it's just that, you know what, forget about, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. Um, here's, here's a more, um, I had, I had um, printed out a picture of um, the Baphomet or whatever, and I've been trying mm-hmm. to, huh? Mhm. Okay, I've been, okay. I've been trying, I don't, I don't know whether it's a deity or like, you know, I know that the Knights Templars use it and they worship it, so it's mm-hmm. like, how is it a deity or how do you how do you how do you use it? Yes, anything anything could be basically deified. So yes, Bachman has been deified. If they're worshiping it, then they deified it. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan is damn near deified. You get what I'm saying? Because they worship him. So that's a, that's that concept. But uh, when you're dealing with any spirit, well, most spirits, but Bachman in particular, uh, he's a strong symbol. And um, all his symbology is representing a, a, a bigger story. So the idea is if you understand the symbology, what you're seeing is communicating with something in you that's deeper, something in you that's deeper. So, like, for instance, his wings represent the astral world, protection. Uh, you see it, he's androgynous. The horns represent illumination. And so you go on and on for days as they go through his hands of good and evil and blah, 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 blah. So they worship him and deified him, and but like anything else, it's all our science. And like I said, if it's something that attracts you to it, then I think you should uh, to just play more, just just do your best to study it, see what it okay, comes well, up for you. Well, that's well, that's great. Um, but okay, that that really helps. Thanks a lot for that. Um, how do you summon it? Because I, uh, because I have a de- I have a first, I have a deity that I took on, and I felt like, mm-hmm. do you have a fit? I have a deity that I, you know, that I took on. Like, okay, for instance, God Osiris, he's a Egyptian god. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of, I kind of grew into learning how to summon him, learning how to tell him what I want. I don't ask him anything. I think that these deities want you to tell them what you want, and that's what I pretty mm-hmm. much learned. So how do I do it with the Baphomet? Same same kind of way. I mean, you're using creative ways to do it. So remember when you were a child and you had a doll, your your your, cho- your toys, like um, and your parents look at you crazy as you invoke life into your toys. You felt your doll. Yeah, because I because I, I invoked life into a lot of my little doll babies, and all well, of them then, were black. Then, then, Most, mostly all then, of them were black. Do, so yeah, you, <laughs> you do the exact same thing with Baphomet. It's the same mentality. When they tell you, when you hear in the Bible, you get in the heaven, uh, a child will lead them, or a child shall lead the way. That what they're talking about is not no fucking dumbass child. They're talking about a child's innocent mentality. So the, so what you do naturally as a child, making invisible friends, having tea parties, and and all the rest of that kind of shit. Um, even with guys, we, even with guys, we we took action figures and had whole theories and stories and put on capes. That imagine, imaginative vibe is we were taking, what you were actually doing is taking an inanimate object and, and invoking life into it. That's what we talked about earlier with the candle. So you do the same thing with Baphomet. What does it make you feel like? What does it make you feel like you talking? See, for instance, my aunt who's who's a badass metaphysician before I was born. She was figuring out the diet for Malcolm X and them. She's telling me I need more iron based upon some symptoms. And she's like, she, she, I've been got that black strap molasses, but that shit tastes like fucking ass. So she's like, you got to take it. So she's telling me to go in there. And, she's like telling me to go in there and talk to the black strap molasses. Like, look, I know we didn't get along. She's dead serious. Tell us, she said, tell us bottle of black strap molasses. I know you ain't get along, but we're going to be friends now. I said, well, I told my aunt, I said, look, well, it is black. So you know that nigga ain't going to listen. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, oh, so, my, my, my. So all of that to say, you know, she, she, what she's still telling me is I need to create a new relationship with this nasty shit. She's like, you need to rely on that heavily. <laughs> oh, boy. You need to rely on that shit heavily. So it ain't nothing changed. It's all the same thing. So it's how it makes you feel. 
So if you if there's if you say to yourself somewhere, I feel I need to talk to her, that means you have some sort of fondness for it. Something in you is has a magnetic attraction to it. You need to find out within yourself what you need to expand and probe that's got you even bringing the shit up to me. You know what I'm saying? I could yeah. tell you what it means to me, but so what? You know what I'm saying? So what? You know what I'm saying? I could tell you what titties mean to me. You'd be like, but I got a pair. It ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> the most, these are the most adorable things I've ever oh, seen. Boy. Like, but I see them every day. I see them every day. You know what I'm saying? You might have a whole conversation about testicles. I don't even know they're there unless somebody fucking greases them wrong. You know what I'm saying? Until they got oh, a my. <laughs> You might have a testicle fetish. So so th- it's the type of thing what it means to you, not what it means to me. So the, the first thing is always step one. As I just pointed out to Mike, you go through the study phase. You, you collect all the intellectual information you can. And then... But like I like I like I like I did like I did with God Osiris. I literally wrote yeah. down everything everything and I studied it and it's like I go on and on in my head and it's so funny that you and it's so funny that you said that because you know I wrote down everything that he was about. I actually I actually do my do all of my um I actually do all of my research online, which is funny. And, um, you know, I really wanted to learn more about, you know, more about the Egyptian. And I felt like, you know, which one would speak to me the most, and that's who I picked. Mm. And then I wrote down everything, and I just go uh, through it in my me, mind over me, and over. You, and it's like, even when I don't. You told me that story before, though. You told me that uh-huh. story before. Though. You told me that story before about Osiris, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that it's, that it's funny that you said that. Say that again? Yeah, that, that, that I remember. You did. T- I do remember somebody telling me that. So it had yeah. to be you that did all that with Osiris. Well, that it's be, the same yeah. thing. Nothing changed. All of these deities are the same thing. They're just different descriptions. So one is not better or good or evil. In, in one is good. One is not safe. One is not black. One is not white. They're all energies. And as long as you, you, your own mind is telling you that you're ready for it, the mere fact that you don't have fear. Fear of it. Is is a is a indication of your subconscious mind saying I'm not ready. That's how that's what fear is used for. Not the only reason, but that's primarily what fear is, of what's unknown. So mm-hmm. if you're scared of it, that means to your subconscious mind, this entity is unknown. You're right. That's why you and, fear and, it. And, so and, if you and, know, and, if if you know if you have any a uh, uh, a hint of uh, uh, if you like it, just a hint of it, and don't even know why you like it, that alone is proof in the pudding. Is definition enough to say something in you has a magnetic attraction to it? Therefore, uh, that means you're supposed to be doing it. Period. There's there's no more on the fence. If you were on the fence, you would still have a fear of it. And you know, I mean, it's so funny. It's it's so funny that you said that too, because um, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to hold up your time, but I've been wanting to talk to you. But basically, it was, it's like this, like like trees. Like sometimes, every once in a while, I get insecure, but it's like I like it. And every time I think about it, it's like I like it, and it's you know, well, it, it, it gravitates, I gravitate to it. Let me let me tell you, there's a whole course in my in a class about how to communicate with trees. So that that's that's a standard. You know what I mean? Trees are nature. They're a gateway. They're a gateway to the fairy world. Going on for days. I think you should be outside hugging trees. So, I mean, we, we go on for days. You shouldn't anything. But you know, but you know what I mean by tre- you know what I mean by trees, though, right? Oh, you talking about weed? Uh, fuck yeah. smoking. I'm, man, shit, you told me you smoke crack and tapping. Then I'm a oh, judge. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Leave, the, leave the drugs alone, sister. I'm be like, yo. So tell me what happened. <laughs> tell me what happened. Yeah, we ain't we ain't gonna, gonna we ain't gonna get to that. I, I say crack is a man made drug. We talking about something from the earth that can be grown, that can be smoked. Uh, every, we not talking about shit that old that can drop in and pop that, that, that line is so weak. Everything's from the earth. Where did she come from? Saturn? Like Molly ain't come from Saturn, she came from the earth too. It's just <laughs> like, weed is so chemically treated, it like, we could we've been making that shit up for the longest. It's it's a drug. But whatever, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I'm not here to say be a clean human. I don't give a, you know what I mean? That's not what I'm here for. If you can function and you happy, then I'm happy. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if that shit is making you tap in. Now, me personally, me personally, um, I started to learn more and more, can, can you tap in without any other substance? Can you all, because basically what you're really doing is altering your mind. Your conscious yes, mind is, is your, your conscious mind is just basically always in the way of your subconscious. Exactly. Yes, it so is. When you smoke, it is. When you smoke, when you smoke, when you smoke weed, what you're doing or drink or getting high, you're shutting down the conscious mind. That's why you feel like you're in the zone. So, which which is a shortcut? Herb packs, all of that stuff. I'm all for it. But at the end of the day, I and I've always even with the herb pack, I told people you need to graduate to where you have you, you create a memory of that zone. Be able to get into that zone without the aid of anything, especially weed. Shit, you need to you need to re, you need to see what CNN. You talking about on CNN about weed? There ain't no re, weed no more. <laughs> that shit is super weed. And I'm gonna tell you that shit ain't weed because in the '80s when I was smoking weed, I was cleaning out the cabinets. And I found a fucking joint from the '60s in my at my house, and I smoked that shit with my mom's. Y'all niggas what? ain't get high. Y'all what? niggas ain't get high until you smoke That's shit. That's what I'm saying. The, I was on the Jimi Hendrix shit, real shit. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? I could see color. You could taste purple. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh. And I was smoking weed all through the 80s thinking I'm smoking good weed. I'm like, no. I re-rolled that fucking 70s joint or that 60s joint. And shit, you could just hear the music. Lullaby <laughs> birds and shit came out. Y'all, I was like, what the fuck? Y'all was smoke. I said, I could see why y'all niggas, we all fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Fucked up as oh, kids. Y'all yeah. niggas was getting high, nigga. Yeah. And um, it, it was like, you was real high. You can hear that oh. fuck. You hear fucking um, the doors and shit. <laughs> Yes, and uh, it's so funny that you it's so funny that you said that because I one more thing before you go on to the next question because you were the, like the main question I wanted to ask you and I did it at the top of my head I didn't even write them down thank God but um right. it's so funny that you that you said that you had you had smoked you re rolled it you smoked it and you were really listening to music it's so funny that you said that because a few days ago I was you know yes I you know I was smoking and. I, and R. Kelly, it, no, I was saying, me. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm saying there was no music playing. It was just me and her sitting in a room. <laughs> and oh, I was hearing music. wow. Well, I still, well, I still want to, well, I still want to tell you this because I want to, I want to, I want to verify my commission. Like, I was like, well, I was watching a few channel at a friend's house, and we were high. You know, I don't smoke to get high. I smoke to be nice, and I smoke to think deep. So it's like when I smoke, I was watching a few channel, and they had like our all R Kelly videos or whatever. There was two videos in particular that really got inside my head, and I don't know. It's like I know with this, this music, they put rituals on it so that it could sell. I know one thing on Saturday, this past Saturday. I was I got in trouble with my mother because I had a friend over, and I don't know. It just my mother specifically is not crazy about people about you know having people over while she's not around, and I kind of understood that. And most of the time when she says it, I'm like nobody's in the house. But this Saturday, sir, I got in so much trouble, and I said, why in the hell did I get in this? How the hell did I get in this much trouble? And you know, I, I, um, and um, I, and I went back to my friend's house and whatever. We got high again or whatever. And you know, I was reading. And the funny part was, he recorded half, most of the videos that we watched the other day. And it hit me. A light just went on in my head. I said subliminal messages. I was like, oh my god. I said that's why I got in trouble like that. <laughs> and I, I wanted to know. I, how old are you? Fifteen? Are you getting in trouble by your mom smoking weed? <laughs> what happened? How old are you? Fifteen? You getting in trouble by your mom smoking weed? No, no. I was at a friend's house smoking weed. I got ho- I I came um I came, I came, I went home that night and the next day I invited my friend over or whatever and we were trying to you know and she came home she was upset I had to text and it was just it was just all over for me literally. So I was just like, you know, I didn't know how I got in trouble like that. So then when I got, I went back to my friend's house or whatever. Only, only, subliminal, so messages, only subliminal messages all Kennedy sending is like he wants to pee on you. Just watch out for this urine. <laughs> all right, sis, so good luck with your work. You know, you go go to the next caller. But that I, again? I like the, yeah, so good luck with your work. And stick with what you're doing to sound like you're on the right path. 
Well, All thank right. you very, thank you very no much. Problem. I appreciate that. Keep up the good work. Thank you. No problem, Peace. Peace. All right. Bye bye. Maybe we'll go to area code seven three two. Area code seven three two on the line. Peace, everybody. Peace, God. Yeah, yeah what up, God? How you doing, man? Brother Penny, Doctor Arlene, hey, Brother man. L. I hope y'all are doing hey, well. Very well, yes, sir. We hope the same. We hope the same. What's up, brother? Okay. Um, just a couple of questions, just real quick. Um, um in, okay. Number one is Western. Prophecy Resources. I've been trying to find the books that Bobby, you, and many other people were talking about as far as us here in the West restoring my eyes. I just wanted a few references, whether it's books, websites, resources that reference that so I can get it on black and white for personal research. I, I, know, it's on, I know Bobby talks about it on that Eugene Adams, uh, or Eugene Adams, he talks about Eugene Adams talking about it. I don't know if Eugene Jean Adams says a particular book or if it's a prophecy on the walls in Cambodia and Anchor Watch. As I remember, I, I know Bobby talked about, uh, there is a book he talks about where they talk about the coming of the gods in the West, the return, the rest- yeah. restoration of my eye and all of this stuff. I can't remember, I remember him telling me what it was. I can't remember the name of it. Okay. For the life of the book. But I know he, I know he was backing it up. I'm gonna tell you where he said it though. Uh, he said it. I got to think of the name of when he was talking about the Eugene Adams tape because Eugene Adams was talking about that particular prophecy. That that I and mean, I know what you're talking about when he talks about um, that the gods will be in the West. They will yeah. have the minds of somebody else who won't look like gods and all of this. He's talking about a book with somebody That's who's giving a call, call for Hermeticum, but I can't, the copy I got, I can't seem to find it in there. Oh, yeah, well, the way Bobby reads, you know what I'm saying, good luck. You know, okay. he'll, open a page, he'll open a page, read a chunk, and, and he has a photographic memory. He'll quote from that one chunk okay. in detail. Gotcha. So, and then you'll be asking, I mean, you can ask him, he'll probably say, well, page 68, but... If I remember, you know, I'll it, next time I talk to him, I bring it up. If it comes up, and then I'll just announce it. You know what I mean? Because that is that that is an interesting uh, uh, book in, indeed. I'm sure people would love to hear it. And the author of that book again? You said something. I didn't I'm hear sorry. it. I thought I heard okay. you say a name. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds sound interesting. So if it comes up. What I'll do is I'll ask him and see what it, see what it, any information he has on it, and I'll just announce it on the radio. Okay, thank but you very much. Moving it's on, it's something I got to try to remember to ask him. But it's All interesting. Right. That it, I think it's something that I would remember. All right. And, All right. And, and I can't. I wish I could remember the tape. It was right when he was talking about Eugene Adams because Eugene Adams was talking about Anchor Watts and all of that prophecy was there. That's Eugene what he was going on. Yeah, well, Eugene Adams, you could just go online. You go. Actually, I, I have that video up. Uh, okay. Eugene Adams, Asians in America. Uh, uh, Asians, what is it? Uh, Africans in Asia. And it's like a breakthrough because uh, the the it's a wonder of the world. One of the wonders of the world. Anchor Watch. When it was um, yeah. it was basically covered over by jungle. So when they unearthed it, it's one of them things. They don't know how they did the buildings and all this detail in Cambodia. And but uh so people have been over there for a while and um they actually rumored that the Vietnam War was based upon that find and they also rumored that Apocalypse Now was based upon that find where uh uh Marlon Brando was hold up held up with those people. Yeah. In Anchor Watch. And right. in fact, it was a ritual. The Inger, the Inglewood Watch riots, was the same time they was finding Anchor Watch. Something close to that. So that Ingle, they was calling it the Anchor Watch riot, was something to do with Anchor Watch. And um, but long story short, Eugene Adams did a documentary on it. A brother named Eugene Adams. And like I said, it's up on YouTube, and it's called Africans in Asia. And yes. he, he shows a bunch of prophecy. He shows actually black people on the walls, and they're talking about the Buddha will rise in the West. They show yeah. they show black people with horns, black people shooting dope, 
in, in the time before we, you know, and this was written on these walls way before there was an America. So okay. it was showing, they were talking about the Buddhas will rise in the West and all of this. And that's where Bobby went in talking about that book that you're talking about. And, I, okay. and, he, and the funny shit is, I asked him about that book too, and he told me what it was, and I forgot. Because it was interesting. When he was saying it, I was like, I want to read that shit. And I asked him one day, I was like, what's the name of that hit? And he told me what it was. I forgot. I just got to remember, but I asked him again. All right, Brother Kenny. The other mm-hmm. one that really, just a, a last question, it really, I'm, this is really a big thing for me because I heard you talk about the Monkey King, um, mm-hmm. Hanuman, a.k.a. Yaz, as you mm-hmm. shared on one broadcast with his new name. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. I've been experiencing these emotions of, I'm talking about like dealing with the heart chakra, dealing with love, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. unconditional, and like this, sir, this, this compassion that surpasses, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, really makes you like compassionate towards people that you normally wouldn't like ignorant behind people at work yeah. and, yes. and people yes. that are clearly yes. controlled by the demiurge anyway. Right. Right. From a right. Gnostic standpoint, because that's what I'm up on nowadays. No, from a mm. Gnostic standpoint, my question is, what resources is like far as in your arsenal, far as like you know the um the earth mm-hmm. and different things? What resources would be useful far as expediting and maintaining emotional detachment from the matrix? Mm. And when I say the matrix, yeah, I'm talking about fear, desire to be alone. Go ahead. I am, uh, let me tell you, I am, I am so, I am so, so, so glad you brought this shit up because I never would have thought about this. Have you ever oh. dealt with the goddess Tara or Kuan Yin? Yes. That's who's fucking with you. It's not Hanuman. When I tapped into the motherfuckers, all I do is cry like a bitch. It'll be an episode of the Jeffersons that could be oh. touching. And I'll be like, what the fuck? Listen closely, but listen, shit. When I was fucking with Tara, I'm watching Scrooge with goddamn Bill Murray. (laughs) This nigga started talking about the Christmas spirit. (laughs) And tears is running down my fucking eyes, niggas. I shit you not. And I couldn't figure out for the life. I'm like, this don't make no fucking sense. I said, all that shit you said, Gnostic, (laughs) Matrix, Detachment, Y'all the bras, demiers. I couldn't figure this shit out for nothing. And at the same time, I was reading uh, uh, William Henry's book, and he was talking about the Oracle of the Illuminati, where he went into detail about Tara and how Tara transforms the Kuan Yin. This compassion, but it's not compassion for the human being. You're more, you're, you're feeling, your soul has opened up to a level where you're feeling compassion for the plight of humanity, the, yes. the, 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 the pity of humanity. You know humanity is not shit. We, we clear on that. But, but it's, it's a compassion for the souls that are down yes. here. It's a compassion yes. for the souls. So you're not really trying to throw that away. You actually went to another level in your heart chakra. See, now, okay. after I, um, they gave me a bath, she said, just get in a bath with salt and sugar. So I'm like, should I bring a crystal? Should I bring? She's like, no, salt and sugar. I did that, and that's when I got out and watched Scrooge. And then I couldn't figure it out. That's, it was that bath that did it. It was that Tara bath. Uh, and then, then three nights in a row she came. I see, I, uh, the first night she was telling me all this shit about the harp. And the harp was connected to the heart. So you get this heart string shit. So she was playing this fucking tune, and I could see she was reconfiguring my heart. Then the, Something else happened one other night with her. Then the third night I see them mummifying and put my shit in canopic jars and fuck it with my heart. So I, I didn't think, I'm watching shit like uh, 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 fucking uh, PD wheat straw, crying and shit, dog. Like, yeah, I mean, this shit is like pathetic. I'm seeing commercials yeah. like, choke, yeah. the, choke the fuck up. Yo, I was watching Love and Hip Hop getting choked the fuck up when Joe Button proposed. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, this is, <laughs> I didn't even like his records. You know what I'm saying? This is, I'm sitting there, that's, that's, that's wonderful. He's on Times Square proposing. And I had to catch myself going, this shit is some dumb shit. This is fucking ridiculous. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and, and, and 
it's it's Kwan Yin, dog. And um, now I was talking to Kiana, who's been fucking with Kwan Yin. Now she's saying, "Oh, panic! I was watching Memoirs of a Geisha. That's my life." <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> what? <laughs> she said, "You gotta watch it." It's, I'm like, I'm not sitting there watching Memoirs of a Geisha. And like she's that. like, "You gotta yeah. watch it. It's good. It's good." So I'm like, uh, if I watch it, I'm gonna be sitting there fucking sobbing. Like I'm just waiting for the day DJ to catch me with this shit. It's over in the house. You know what I'm saying? It's over. Yeah. over put the apron on, bitch. You know what I'm saying? So not, but I know what it is. Like I said, I watched a good episode of Sanford and Son. You know what I'm saying? I'm wrecked. Okay. I want this shit to stop. I'm just like, I want this shit to stop. I have to catch myself. Like I, I can't watch it. It's gonna make me cry. What kind of shit so is that? Compassion on like, a whole other level. That's what it's worth talking about. Yeah, you went, your soul went to another level of compassion. Because what you're feeling is not sorry for humanity. You're feeling sorry for the souls. See, Kuan Yin has compassion for the souls. Because you'd be like, well, Kuan Yin has got compassion. So you think it is homeless people and, and shit like that. But it's no. actually compassion for, for the soul that is trapped down in the human body. So I'll keep regular everyday yeah, yeah. human shit and be like, mm-hmm. damn, yo, that's, that, that's wonderful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, brother, like, I'm God, damn you, I know that this world is already screwed up. I know that the creator, is, is, I, I'm just saying, and this whole matrix is a debauchery. I, I, I know the whole story. Right. And I remind myself of that every day. I have to get up and go to fucking work and right. tire myself out. But the good thing right, is about right. what I do is, you you know, it's like you, I get a lot of thinking time when I'm driving and doing deliveries. But, right. you know, I mean, just, just the, the, the – just, you know, the fact of being able to expedite, and yes, I will be getting the herb packs. The, the, uh, you got the 2.01 or something like that yeah, ready? Yeah, yeah, take your time, man. It's all, everything is, yeah, it's here. I just sent okay. a whole stack of them shits out to a whole bunch of disgruntled, where's my package ass niggas out. So I just sent a whole stack out. So I'm pretty much yeah. caught up. I got one more stack to do, and I'm pretty much caught up. I think Khadija keep calling me. Which one do you recommend for this work that I'm talking about doing? Um, give me one second. Let me see what Khadija wants. You know I'm on the radio, Khadija. All right, coming back. Um, like uh, well, for compact, do you mean to? I would say go with the compassion. You're just going to be a crying-ass nigga. Because I tried everything. So <laughs> let's, you're just going to be a crying-ass nigga. So okay. that, that is, I mean, I would say if you've never tried it, just try a regular herb patch. See where it takes you in terms. Because okay. that's the first one that's going to hit your pineal. See what it does. See, you know, see where it takes you. You know what I mean? They're cheap. So it's not like you're going to be like, well, if I try one, I'm going to be so, you know, it won't be till next year. They're, they're like candy down there. So, you know, you see how it works for you and all the rest of that shit. And, yeah, let me give that out. If if you don't know, the herb pack are all natural organic herbs that it's a combination. I've been selling them for three years. It's like medicine for your pineal. It helps you with your meditation, helps you go to the next level. Very instrumental. Yeah. You can smoke it or drink it as a tea. You can email me, panicpack at hotmail.com, panicpack at hotmail.com to get it. And, you know, the prices are very reasonable. Also, yeah. at my classes, um, and I'm just giving this message out to everybody. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to. At my classes, classes are going to start soon. We're finishing up the last, uh, the, uh, we're finishing up a cycle now, so we're about to get into a new cycle. So now's the time. Class prices are very reasonable. You could be at any place in the world. We do it via Skype. So you don't have to be here. If you're, in, if you're out here, you can come over to the house. If not via Skype, I also record them, so so you'll eventually get a recording of them. So it is on, it is cracking. I want to, of course, if you you know know by now, I've been talking about my man Jerry Miller and his organ pieces, and um, you should understand everyone needs a chip of that organ in their life. So if you can't get okay. them on Facebook, you got to just email me panicpack at hotmail dot com. And yeah. I'll be able to put you in touch with Jerry. But primarily, if you're new to this game, if you're just hearing a couple of my lectures, I have four years of lectures for yeah. free. You can email me, panicpack at hotmail.com, P-A-N-I-C-P-A-C-K at hotmail, and I'll send you a link to all my lectures for free. 
because at the end of the day, no matter what you buy from anybody, the information I give you has always been free and the, always the most important thing you can get from me. So I'm yeah. willing to get that free. Just email me and ask for the links. So good. We got that out the way. Keep going. So I would say for you, I would say just a regular herb pack, that, 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 that'll do you right. You know what I'm saying? For the first time and... Or hey, you know, when you email me, I'll send you a list of the various types of herb packs I got, and you may see something that stands out. There's Dream, Hex, Money Packs, Love, and I'm sure I'm missing Prosperity, Ancestor, depending on what you're trying to do. But the standard herb pack is for the pineal gland. Medicine Thank for you. the third eye. Thank Excellent. You, and um, there's things, of course, that the lean has that goes with it. He has uh, chakras, stones. One of the best sets I've ever seen for a very good price. It was Dr. Alimelbay.com. But he has a lot of shit. There's always something hiding in the crevice that you could use magically for the occult for him. So he's just a site worth checking out. Dr. Alimelbay.com. Yeah, yeah. PDF for excellent. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. So, yeah. so, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And at the end of the day, if you think it's a hustle, you can you can call and get fucking free here. It's full of free links. But we give out good free shit as well. You know what I'm saying? Because what's yeah. more valuable is the lectures that you can get. Everything else does help pay the rent and keeps the lectures going. We're not going to kid ourselves. At the end of the day, lectures first, information yeah. first. Is yeah. There. So, you know. Yeah. So we can move on. And, and, and But, uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I don't think I would have the balls or the opportunity to talk about me just sitting here crying like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Off of dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Pulp fiction. Nigga <laughs> crying yeah. that thing. Oh, so, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking bad. It, it was going on for a while, then it, then it stopped. Yeah. Boom. Damn, I'm watching TV like you can feel that lump in your throat watching the Django with a lump in my throat. Mm, I ain't even uh, see that yet. Yeah, so it, uh-huh. this, ain't, I like, this ain't working for me, man. Right. But it is what it is, you know, because yes, it's the heart that went to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's actually excellent. That's actually excellent. Yeah. Excellent day. This is all for your past lectures, by the way. I just want you to mm-hmm. know that I'm not a new listener to you. I've been listening to the one yeah, you no, did on. Tell. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. Yes, I just want you to know, and that's that's from past lectures, the work that I did up to this point to get to that point. I just want yeah. you to know, even though I haven't taken a class yet, I just want that's you to good. know that what your what you did was not in vain. So with that said, thank yeah, you, that's, and that's I'm going to get right. off. What's your, name? What's your name again, brother? Oh, I'm J.R. calling out of New Jersey. I'm J.R. J.R. People call from me New J.R. for short. Okay, from New Jersey. Okay, I think I'm going to remember that. Yeah. All right, bro. I'm I'm so glad to help. It's always good to see when somebody I'm able to add to somebody's you know transformation and they're able to take the ball, run with it, and become something else. You know what I mean? No doubt about it. Oh, good. You gonna go to yes, area sir. code eight six zero? Area code eight six zero. You on the air? Oh, I'm finally on the air after so many shows. I don't forgot what I wanted to ask. Damn, son. That, that, that chick done threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, hey, man, y'all, y'all always have good shows, man. I, I wanted yeah. to know, like, really, why why people aren't, like, declared mores? Why ain't that really pushed? I know, Panic, you really be on it, like, you know, like, the eyes of the beholder and, you know what I'm saying, perception is really, you know what I'm saying, key. Like, why mm-hmm. why aren't you, like, a declared more? And Aline, why did you go that way? Because I'm more so leaning towards, I'm an Aquarius. I don't really like to have labels and things like that. I'm not even going to change my name. My name's Jonathan, so it's just going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'll gravitate towards a lot of different things because the universe pulled pull me into, you know, like, it gave me, like, good transmission. I've always been on a good path. It always put me in the right position. A lot of things that y'all touch on, a lot of the things that the callers touch on, is things that I'd be about to say or questions that they answer my questions. So I know I'm in, in a good spot. So really, I just wanted to know, like, why you're not a more? 
Or why are you, uh, you understand? Know well, I mean, you you just could chalk it down. It ain't got to be that deep. Different strokes for different folks. That's almost like saying, why aren't you a Boy it, Scout? It, exactly. Why aren't you, why aren't you a, 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 a decathlon? Why aren't you Bruce Jenner? And a, exactly. A you, 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 you just, it's all science. There's many paths to light. There's exactly. no one path. So when you say, why aren't you a this or why aren't you a that, it's, it's, it's another way of saying when you become that, you've done something better than the next man. Exactly. So, do what you do. So, you know, do you. Right, you, right, you do what you do. So you may find a path that may resonate with you. You get what I'm saying? And and you decide to go that route to find light. Ain't no doubt that Aleem is enlightened. So you ain't going to say, well, I'm a more, he's not a more. Ain't no doubt that Aleem has found light. You get what I'm saying? So in, 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 and I would say in my mind, I found the light that I need. So right. it is what it is. So, right. so I and, mean, and, you know, and, it's just, mm-hmm. Right, I was just going to say, and coming from my standpoint, God is um, in order to find the light. You don't have to be a more. A more right. is just simply um, dealing with my ethnicity and dealing with the fact of me studying law. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you got the aspect of me going through the science of law and learning my Morris family. But as far as me finding the light, I had light before I learned the law. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, in other words, my spirituality was always at the forefront. Me um, saving my soul was always at the forefront. It had nothing to do with the mundane, earthly existence of the shit that goes on here. You know what I'm saying? The law right. was just part of the shit that goes on here that I would say, okay, well, look, I got a loophole that I can get through on. You know what I'm saying? Right. So let me use the law in order to get through those loopholes while I'm here in the flesh. I'm not going right, to be right. stupid and say, I'm not. I'm not going to be crazy and say, "Oh, well, I got you." Know, I'm just going to be heavily, you know, heavily bound. Then no earthly good. That ain't the way this shit's supposed to be. You know, what I'm saying? supposed to have one foot in heaven, one foot on earth. In other words, you're supposed to um, balance the energies and balance this information. You know, what I mean? some cats just go too far to the left and too far to the fucking right. I ain't the case. Right. right. I, I, you know, I, I, I have no problem with you. The, the reason, the reason why, your name. you know, I have no problem with that. Right, you know, the reason like why I, I said before, you know, do you, you know? Right, you know. right. The reason why I was basing the question, it was basically, like, I kind of understood that, you know, y'all was, like, second generation, so you was, like, privy to that information, so you went that path. It's the same with panic. So my parents, you know, being not being privy to that information, I would be first generation for me knowing this information and passing it on. To my generation, so that's why I kind of like answer my own question, and then but I still wanted to like ask that just to get you know the ball rolling and whatnot. Gotcha. You know, well, I mean, but there's, there's a thousand ways to find light. You know what I'm saying? You, right. you need to find your truth. That's really what it is. Okay. And, and no one needs to promote well, the truth is a better one. No one needs to promote this as a better one or a lesser one. I don't think it's a generation. This in, this information is actually timeless. So I don't I think know, it, it goes from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. It's just a different dialogue for different situations. It's really, if I really just block everything away, Bobby said almost everything I've had to say. He just said it to his generation. So I'm not really the new guy. I'm just a guy who knows how to stu- – and these are, these are Bobby's words. He He's the one who said, you need to do the old B shit. You need to do this and that, this and that. And I'm sitting there like, I really don't want to do that. I want to study. He's like, no, you need to do that. He was the one that pushed me to keep talking because he's, he would say that his generation, he, he knows how to speak to his particular audience, his generation, his time. And he stopped lecturing even before he had his stroke because he was like, he, he's like he don't see what he, what he has to say anymore, that he said everything he felt he had to say. And it's not, I've never looked at it as like it's my turn or somebody else's turn but our generation is just you speaking to a new crowd, a new you just a new it's the same it's the same shit, but it's a new slang. You get what I'm saying? A new slang. I'm I'm from the YouTube generation. He don't know shit about an email. You get what I'm saying? So all you just talk about is a, a adaptation, but you're using this, it's the same fucking information. Just rehash and, and explain some sort of different way, whether it's under a banner or whether it's so called. You free from it, whatever that means. You get what I'm saying? But but you know, I, I would go as far as to say, you know, there's this it's, it's too too many ways to find life. The problem becomes when you Christianize it, 
And then you start talking about my church is better than your church. Your church ain't that. That's when that's the problem. That's at the core of that problem. This one is better than that one. That more is better than this more. This new obby is better than that new obby. This occult and the same shit with these free niggas. You you ain't as dark like you used to be anymore. You ain't the dark side nigga anymore. That's the real issue. My shit is better. You know what I'm saying? My shit is better. That's at the core of that type of thinking. My right. shit is better. I, I do it for real. Once you see, you need to get over that. Is this many ways to get to that aha moment? And the funny That's shit mean. is. The more you study, the more you see how much this shit can contradict. There's no one answer. Like, so, you know, so most people are logical and they look for that one answer. Well, this is what Baphomet means, the end. But I've seen people break the shit down and it have a whole different meaning that's valid. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. fucking valid. And then I've seen it my way and I've known it to be valid based upon feelings and, and, and history. But I'm like, oh, I get it. Who the fuck ever said we both can't be right? You get what I'm saying? Who the fuck ever said we both can't be right? The only because thing... It's funny the way the way I got here is through from the music, listening to Wu-Tang back then, wanting to know what they was talking about, and then the fast forward to now, and to be something totally different, not being music, more spiritual, and then finding out that this stuff been going on since the 50s and 40s. Right. And, like, it, it's just amazing how... This information, I know why it's not out there, mm-hmm. but how we need for it to be in the community, for it to be something that we we talking amongst ourselves, you know, branching out more like because I see the transmission from the sun every day coming down, you know. Oh, well, you know, so, um, you know, um, and you know, this has been explained. Over. It's been explained so many times that that never was there a time where this information was for masses of people. There was not even one time, even at our height, it was still for a certain amount of people. Because, but the elite that were running the planet knew how to take care of take care of the masses. Now the elite that runs the planet lets the masses just be the fucking masses. But those masses never had ne- um, that much knowledge of stuff. It was really just feeding their donkeys and growing their corn. You get what I'm saying? And then you had the sages and the priesthood class and all that. So it never was a point of the masses knowing. That that that's the one of the first things you learn in occult science that it's always the elite few. You make yourself available for those who want it, though. You get what I'm saying? So it's not the context of it's the elite and and Joe and Bill can't get in even though they're knocking at the door. If they're knocking at the door in this day and age, um, I think it's you know I mean you can always point people to information. But that's why I think it's so important to to put the ball in their court. Because everybody, if you even ask a Christian, they'll have a conversation with you about the meaning of life if you're going to sit there and tell them all of this shit. But it's it's really just going on deaf ears. So one of the first things you learn is motherfuckers got to want to dig the shit out of you. That's when you say, okay, this person is serious. When they, when they just won't stop, they're an eager beaver. And that is the definition, at least now, to see if they're worthy of even sharing a certain amount of shit. Um, you know, and everybody learns that. Like, uh, it was, Khadija had a co-worker. He asked me, Khadija, all of this shit. By the time they got around, there ain't no Jesus. <laughs> but she didn't want to talk to Khadija no more, you know what I'm saying? Right. And she said, there's another motherfucker on her job. Can't stop. I had a dream. I had a dream. As she started talking to him for real, and he's really on it. So it's like you can just tell by somebody's uh, excitement or their zeal if you right. wanna if you should be giving them the, uh, sharing them certain information. So you always got to see if they're gonna do the work. You know what I'm saying? So that was always my model. What the fuck are you asking me shit that you can find out on Google? I mean, if you don't want to know, you know what I'm saying? I, I I wouldn't be waiting to fucking talk to me on no goddamn phone. You know, panic. I was trying to call you for six months. What's the question? Is what's the difference between this mason or that mason? <laughs> like, now, now I don't want to just dog that brother, but like, now let's put it in another context. If I say to you, I want to join a gang, and I go, well, lean. What's the difference between a crip and a blood? 
You <laughs> this nigga's a fucking idiot. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying, well, I want to join the gang. I don't know which one. <laughs> should I be a crip or should I be a blood? At the very least, you're going to say, well, I'm going to be a crip for life, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You still may be making a mistake, but at least you know the mistake you made. Right. So I, I'm saying, and, and not to mention, it's a matter of just going on Google. One of them likes French fries and the other is like Frank meat. Oh, that's the difference? You know what I'm saying? This is Google bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm you know, like, so it's not that he's bothering me. It's not that I'm above that. It it just makes me think a whole different way. And that way is like, well, what's in his mind where he feels that he needs to rely on somebody else for that level of questioning? If he needs to rely on somebody else for that level of questioning, why would you give him anything worth anything if he can't figure out this basic a, a Dr. Seuss level of study, you know what I'm saying? There's certain prerequisites that you kind of expect somebody to walk through the door with, and at the very least, that's the aggression for knowledge. Like, I'm saying, you're not even aggressive enough if you're going to ask me the difference. You know what I'm saying? Right. We shouldn't, you know, Bofferman has a seven-page Wiki, Wikipedia now. There's no reason to ask, well, what is Bofferman? I could get, I get if you could ask, once you studied it, you may need to understand some occult concepts, some concepts to activate it. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. I mean, I'm not talking for nothing. I, I assume you assume that I have some expertise, so it, it, or and you're trying to obtain that expertise, but you can tell when somebody's going for expertise or somebody didn't do shit. So it's very important for us to understand how important it is for us to have faith in our own study, our own research, our own mind. Because if you don't have study or belief in your own mind, this is it is all for nothing. You get what I'm saying? I can't make you convince you into that shit. You know what I'm saying? You have to convince yourself. You have to uh, convince yourself. And and that means you have to have faith in yourself. And I, I see motherfuckers that have very little faith in themselves. You know what I'm saying? And it won't work any other way. Mm-hmm. I think that's enough of a rant. You go to the next caller. All right. We got area code two zero three. Area code two zero three. You on the line? What's up? How y'all doing? Fine. What up, How you doing, brother? Yeah, my question is about the uh, the gin. I wanted to know if you mm. could uh, explain some rituals, books. A lot of the information that I've tend to find on it is like. Is either from a negative or it's from like something extreme, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, the and it's usually things different. like you need to fast for three months or, you know, different things of that sort, you know? Uh, where they show up the most or hung around the most is in is uh, the Quran. So they just became the devil. So they became evil. But really, if you go back to their origin, they're really talking about the Goetia. And really just talking about, uh, and, and Aleem goes in on the Dijin, so I'm going to let him go in on it as well. But uh, there's certain research I found that way is connected to uh, 72 Goetia and uh, pineal gland, which are, there's 72 chakras in the pineal gland. And, uh, well, the, to go back to Goetia, are channel deities that were channeled by McGregor Mathers and and uh, Alistair Crowley. Now, what I do know about them, they were able to get the names and the titles of these 72 Ds and their functions. They were able to get figures from them and detailed descriptions and what they call their ranks. Most of their ranks are like the dukes, princes, and all that, whereas the, the European heads actually mimic the go at it under them names, sir, such and such, Duke, and they sit over a certain amount of legions, and they do a certain thing. But, uh, but instead, they, uh, even though they got this information, they weren't able to really tap into the Goetia. Now, one of the, there's an old white occultist named Polk Runyon. And as Crowley had the OTO, he had like the ATO or the, another OTO something. And right, Polk Runyon, he was, a bit, he was a little bit different because what he would say is, where every white person is like, when you do the ritual, you banish. He's like, no, you don't banish. We did all that work to get him there. Why the fuck would you banish? Which he's talking some c- c- certified nigga shit. 
And he also dropped Polk Runyons that, that them niggas is not really dealing with the Goetia shit. Because if you could put the shit in a circle and contain it, then it's some pussy ass shit and ain't the real shit. Now, the, these 72 in, in, in Egyptian mythology, they talk about Set, which is Satan, which is the pineal gland, has 72 helpers. These 72 helpers represent the Goetia. And then there's also 72 angelic forces. Now the, the djinn uh, became the uh, uh, I don't they, I don't know if they gave too much detail on it, but the the djinn represented the Goetia as the genie in the bottle. The 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 uh, bottle or the lamp represented the pineal gland. So the the djinn that lived in the lamp that you would rub, it just really meant uh, you're stimulating the pineal gland and releasing the djinn or the power of the genie or the chakra in the uh, pineal gland. And later, like I said, they, came, they became connected to the sand and sand deities and, 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 and demonic. Now, in my book, which is a breakthrough for you, one of the ways I talk about contacting the, the gin is with drinking gin. So I give a ritual on how to use gin to contact the, the gin. That's why you ever hear a nigga who be drinking, they say as soon as they drink that gin, they be really fucked up. Like, niggas, I could do this, I could drink that, but I get on that gin, that's it. I said, because you actually yeah. call, you opening up the pineal and you're getting on that, the, that gin. And I give you the history of how they made gin. Very ritual. I mean, all of it has a ritualistic, and the, Moor, and the Moors uh, showed white people how to, uh, uh, what do they call it, the process of making liquor. But um, the, when they went through the gin shit, um, it was, I can't remember, the, like I said, it's in my book, I wrote it so long ago. But it, it, it's a story where you go, oh, they, they they act like they don't remember the recipe, but it's a more that actually a, actually came up with it. So that you deal with gin rituals to deal with the, the gin. And basically, like I said, I haven't seen much detail on names and specifics more than the gin as a force. Um, there's a book called... One second, one second. What? Uh, it's called A Field Guide to Demons, Fairies, Fallen Angels, and Other Subversive Spirits by Carol K. Mack and Dinah Mack. They have a little good thing on the uh, the gin in there, or the gin. They also call it gin, which was short for genie. So, right. um, and I know Lee. Uh, uh, Lean knows some stuff on it because he broke down shit with like Aladdin, um, Aladdin, and all that stuff. I don't know if he wants to speak on that. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, um, in the physical sense, genes is nothing more than your genes, which is your ancestors. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, that's that's the simple, the most basic thing. And um, Islam was geared towards the fact of you of you not acknowledging your ancestors. Mm. Therefore, the jinn or your ancestors became evil. Mm. Okay. okay. In other words, you didn't have to go through the middle peop the middle, the middle, um, um, through what is called, you know, um, the middle um, person or people. You know, you can go straight to God or Allah. You know what I'm saying? Allah being nothing more than your higher self. You know, exactly. however, you know, however, on the physical plane, you need your ancestors because your ancestors become part of you once they leave the physical body. Once they leave their physical body, they become part of you. The memories. Um, a matter mm. of fact, you are a concentration of your gen- of your um, of your ancestors. Seven generations on your father's side, seven gen- generations on your mother's side. So, fourteen generations you are a concentration of. But mm. those that have passed on, they go inside of you, right? Um, so that that is basically the science, you know, of 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 the genes, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Mm. Um, the 72 Goetias, um, the 72 Angelical Force, which actually comes out to 72,000, 72,000, comes to 144,000 when you add right. it together. All right? You have 72,000 um, 
This dude saying like particles in which that is around what's called the Kuta gland, where the Kutalini resides at. You have 72,000 um, saying like particles around the pineal gland. You raise the Kutalini, the Kutalini raises up those 72,000 Goatians to become part of the 72,000 um, angelical forces, which become the 144,000. Right. That's, what, that's what's going on. So, you know, that's what Brother Panic is saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what Brother Bobby told niggas 20 years ago. That's it. Right. All right. Right. All right, so Excellent. I took that information out. The book you, you mentioned, you said, yeah, uh, mean, Cal uh, Gates. Yeah, The Field Guide to Demons. It's pretty, like I said, it's a pretty good book. And it really uh, it, it expands on all the demons and the concept of it. And it gives you the folk tale, the folklore, uh, how some of them, how they turn, how how they so called turned evil, and how they were good before. You know what I mean? Because of course, Damien uh, meant genius before, and it meant uh, angelic force and angel before, and then it became what it is now, and so on and so forth. So they kind of go in. That's a pretty good book. You know what I mean? On that level, but and that's an, also another thing that Pope Runyon, the white boy, points out. Uh, when it, when the lean just dropped, that to go at it in the uh, they have the angelic counterpart, and that's the 144. And I can't remember how I did it. Um, it's in my book where I connected to the five. It, it, the 72 has a lot of connected to the five, and that becomes the five points of Baphomet. And remember, Bob, that five points of Baphomet co- controls the Goetia, controls the 72. Um, I can't remember how I. Um, how I made the connection That's why I wrote it so long ago And I was in channel writing this book But um, um, I saw where 5 and 72 Come together And of course the 144 come together But uh, where the 5 comes in And how um, it's split in the five, Those 5 points Come together as the 72 In some, some weird way like that And whatever it was the math added up And because they'll tell you that Baphomet The 5 point star control, controls All the Goetia uh, Solomon and all the rest of this jazz. All right, yeah, all right. Good, good stuff. All right. That's it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yes, sir, bro. Good stuff. Good all stuff. All right, peace. Peace. All right, we got area code two five one. Area code two five one. You're on. Line. Peace. Peace. Sound like Lord Jesus. Here we go, 251. Here we go, 251. Right, we're going to go to area code 251. Um, yeah, 215. Here we go, 215. You're on the line. Peace, peace, peace. 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 What up, what up? What's going on, bro? You can hear me, bro? Yes, sir. What's up? Yeah, we got you. What's good, bro? Uh, I'm, I'm black, born out of Jersey, bro. What up, black? What's up, bro? Uh, my question is, uh, you know, like we deal with the uh, spirit realm and everything. So, uh, mm-hmm. how, I mean, uh, how does that protect us in situations like, you know, when we get sick, like, uh, you know, like how, like, like for example, like in box situation, like, you know, my question was like, uh, was he still protected? Well, well, let, let, well, let, I'm glad you bring that up. I'm glad you bring that up because people have been asking me about it. They're just so baffled. Two things. First of all, body, like anybody else, is having a human experience. The body is not going to last forever. Everyone came here to do what they came here to do, and everyone's going to die from something no matter what you're into. In fact, Bobby has a lecture, I think it's a Mayotte lecture in Harlem, where he's talking about the goddess Sashet. And the goddess Sashet is the goddess of melanin. And what Sashet does, she's also the goddess of writing. And he explained how she's writing on the tablet about everyone's life, that no matter what, your time is your time, and you're going to die from something. So it's not, see, see, to say he just got sick and the spirits wasn't protecting him and all that is another way of saying that you believe random shit is happening. 
You get what I'm saying? That Jesus is not looking out for you or, or somebody is not looking out for you. It doesn't work like that. You're here to do what you came to do. If he left tomorrow, I guarantee you what he's done for folks, I would say, is a grand success on planet Earth. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Definitely. While most Definitely. motherfuckers only, figure, only still can't figure out how to fucking roller skate. So people, so right. somebody asked me if Bobby once said in a, in a lecture, was spiritually protected, so how did he get a stroke? I'm like, no, he has a human body and a human brain, and he, and he will die like a human. But when he's so not spiritually protected, the spiritual work that he's done is pristine, hands down. So now there are things, and I pointed this out on our show on a Wednesday, there's something called fate. There's a certain amount of things you can control through perspectives, and there's a certain amount of things that's going to happen regardless. So if you came to this planet, you came for a purpose. There's no one without a purpose, even if it's a prostitute, even if it's to be a one-legged prostitute with a skateboard. While we say, while we scoff at that, it still may be somebody's greatest work. So you're here to do what you came to do. Now, there are certain things that while, while you're here – doing it, you can change. You can, ch- you can change based upon perspective. And a lot of minor health things are those things. So catching a cold is something that you could avoid. So let's say you, you were designed to be a taxi driver. Your, from your perspective and what you could do, you're going to drive that taxi because that's what you came to do. You may do it with a cold. You may do it with happy. You may do it sad. You may do it stressful. You may do it because you love it. That's all in your mind, but the, but you're going to be in that cab. You get what I'm saying? So so Bobby having a stroke, we need to understand that um, that you know, like for me, instance for me, I have high blood pressure. There's nothing I, I've tried everything, ate every fucking herb, and did every fucking goddamn thing. Every goddamn conscious person said, and up until tonight when I could be getting goji berries too, and this shit don't change because uh, it's it's something that I'm supposed to go through. I'm learning a lesson through it. You get what I'm saying? But then right, there's right, shit right. that I know. There's certain shit that I can spiritually deal with. That 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 is my choice. You get what I'm saying? So your chakra work is your choice. And certain so-called major diseases are your choice too. But certain things are written in stone for you. I believe. You get what I'm saying? So for the most part. So getting back to your question, there are these deities are represented as formulas, as particular medicines, as particular uh, 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 energy fillers to energy that's missing in your life. So if you're missing, if you're missing combination 731, then you have to figure out what deity fulfills 731. And then to deal with the energy is like filling up that gap for completion or balance, completion or balance. So the, I, the big idea is that um, to know your deity is just basically the same way you may know a whole bunch of vitamins you should take for whatever. You ever meet like one of these health guys and they tell you whatever vitamin? My pee is funny. Get some cranberries. You know what I'm saying? You know, I can't sit straight. Get, get some vitamin E, mix with vitamin C and some razzleberries. And you're like, oh, that shit works. They happen to know all of these physical prescriptions for us to take to for, for the physical body because it's easy. You get what I'm saying? You know your knee hurts, you know to take some MSM, congruent and shit. Now, but see, now, the spiritual realm represents that same process. You're using spirits like, let's say, herbs. So to know the spirit is to know the prescription. So if you're looking for healing deity, there's always a healing deity. You're looking for... Uh, uh, relationship deities, there's always a relationship deity. Money deities, there's always a money deity. There's always a this, there's always a that. And and here's the good news. You can't find them, you can make some shit up. And it, it'll still work, because that's the concept. There's a book called Creating, a, Creating Magical Entities by Scott Cunningham. Hold on, let me, well, no, I don't think it's Scott Cunningham. There's something, there's something Cunningham, I'll tell you right now. Uh, it is... Magical Entities. Um, it is by David Michael Cunningham, and he tells you how to make a, an entity as powerful as 
whatever you need that represents the biggest thing in your life or as something as minor as a DD to help you get to work faster for traffic. And, the, and so the point is you're making your own medicine with your mind. Right. And so creativity dictates how far you can go. Your mind dictates uh, how, 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 how much you can expand. You're only limited by your imagination. Only limited by your imagination. But don't get it twisted. If you are supposed to die on Tuesday, you're not going to find a deity that's going to keep you alive. You're supposed to be off this planet. You have a purpose and a mission. So Bobby himself, who people, uh, only a few people ask me that question. He's got a lecture where he's talking about when it's your time, it's your time. Via the goddess Sashet, clubbing the Tahuti. And, you know, that's clear. Otherwise, we'd be living for fucking forever. Right. Who would die? You know what I'm saying? Who would, or, or, not even because you're conscious. Or, niggas on accident, you know what I'm saying, would never die. Because if you had the ability to not die, just out of, in, 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 it, it's kind of like that because um, the closest I've seen people come is what they call dementia. What they call dementia. That, um, and it's usually people with purpose, purposes like dementia is related to the word dimension. And my grandmother had dementia. And, and they usually get it, it's a psychological thing. Because, you know, my, I was talking to my aunt, her daughter, said, well, you know, what, everybody else dead. She's the only one alive, you know what I'm saying? With an right. ego and shit, with an ego. You know what I'm saying? We go to my nephew's graduation, my sister pull up to the curb, so, you know, my grandmother couldn't get up in the, in the, in the truck. So, you know, I had to close the doors and she had to get closer. She, I swear she talked for about half an hour about how she could have did it. I'm like, nigga, let it go, yo. You old, son. But the stockings was in the way. I'm like, you old, yo. I'm like, you don't want to. She's still here. She don't want to give up. Like, um, sure. like, you need to give up, son. Like, then, like, this is like 10 years ago when this shit was happening. She's still here. She's in the same home that is Dr. Ben. So that's how I know he was chilling. Because they be chilling in there. I was like, yeah, she need to, she need to get Dr. Ben some ass. Go get her to the next level. That nigga think I'm playing. I'm serious. And my grandmother was kind of like, I was like, she kind of a floozy. Like, we went there. I was like, she was showing me these pictures. She's like, yeah, this is when I was in New Orleans. This is when I was in Louisiana. I was with this nigga in such and such. I was with this nigga over there. I'm sitting on you just traveled to America. What the fuck? I'm saying, I don't even want to hear no more. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to hear no more. And then word to the mother, like, um, my uncles in them, they still go. They go every week. They put up pictures. She looked like old as hell. I'm like, she came to me in the green world asking me about death. I don't really want to go yet. I'm like, you need to leave. You know what I'm saying? She just feeding her mush every day. And then... You can put a picture up on Facebook talking about black don't crack. I'm sitting there going, no, black crack, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Black crack. I'm like, I'm like y'all need, she needs to be free. You know what I'm saying? And now my aunt was telling me she was slipping. She would do shit like take money out the bank, be counting money in the street. You know what I'm saying? Thousands. So she said, dude, was doing shit like that at first. She said, the only person left was my grandfather's sister. She said, as soon as my grandfather's sister left, that's when she was gone. Because she ain't supposed to fucking be here no more. But she's, so her spirit is gone. But she, she refused to let go of the body. You know what I'm saying? So when they're so scared, it's like they become zombies. So their spirit is in that world. Because I went to the world she was in, and I'm sitting there like, she's, it's like halfway in, halfway out. It's like real purgatory. I have a good friend whose grandmother was like that too. Wouldn't leave, you know what I'm saying? She used, to, she used to come to me a lot and be like, oh, I ain't ready for that. I'm like, yo, your daughter's here. Your daughter in them is gone. Her father's gone before she's gone. I'm like, you need to go ahead. She left. She's like, yo, this shit is, she's like, this shit is happiness. I'm telling you, how niggas is fucked up. Nate Dog just finally came through and said he finally found peace. All that time, Nate Dog came to me and was like, 
he didn't want to leave this motherfucker. He was still stuck here, which is hard Take because, that, you yeah. know what I'm saying, he's the dog. You know what I'm saying? Right. He ain't ready to yeah. go. He said he's just finally starting to enjoy death, like realizing yeah. where he's at. He had the same mind. So, so now when it's time to go, it's time to go. The only other phenomenon I've seen people hang on to is dementia. And there's this idea that accidents happen. Like if you were walking down the street and a safe fell on your head, that's how you're supposed to go. That's you, you ordered that up. And for no other reason, you could just say the Lord is a trash. But you, you're the one who made that connection. So there's no such thing as accidental death. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you get trampled by the elephant, that elephant looked around the room and said, not this nigga, that nigga. You know what I'm saying? And that's a reason. You get what I'm saying? So it. You, you, spiritually, you're protected from the everyday minutia of shit. You get what I'm saying? I've seen the everyday right. bullshit, but there's bullshit that that's going to happen. That's because that's what planet Earth is. You get what I'm saying? You don't get to say humanity's fucked up, but then I do some spiritual shit and everything is everything. You know what I'm saying? No, it's fucked right. up for a reason. You get what I'm saying? It's fucked up for a reason. It's 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 this perception. You know this this constant plight. To 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 keep your 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 body safe, which is nothing more than than your ego fighting to survive, and you're fighting based upon the stimuli that's sitting around you. They tell you that we on red alert. They tell you that that this guy's coming and this bad guy and Osama bin whatever's coming, and motherfuckers get up tight. You get what I'm saying? Based upon perspective, but but at the end of the day, this is because that's the nature of humanity. Sickness is the nature of humanity. It, everyone's going to get sick and everyone's going to die. I like something my boy Tep said to me one time. He said, I don't give a fuck how conscious you are, panic. They're going to bury your ass in the church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, you're right. They're going to take your ass to church and get you a regular service, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we talk about the shit. It's not like we're going to have fucking Egyptian funeral, right? You're going through humanity. This is a, you're, have, you, you, you're having a human experience. And that means you're going to have heart attacks, strokes, club knees, bad vaginas, testicleitis, <laughs> anal problems, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all sorts of shit, you know, itchy titties, all sorts of shit. You're going to have all of this happen because you are having a human experience. I don't give a fuck how spiritual you are. Mm-hmm. The best you could do is eat your goji berries, <laughs> eat your goji berries, your spirulina. <laughs> And just power through it, son. <laughs> just hold your head down, eat your spirulina, and power through it, kid. <laughs> See what happens. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you get a good chick. <laughs> Maybe you get a good chick in your corner. And that, that's the best you could do. A good chick, a good book, and a nice a three-piece, you know, a good three-piece dinner, that's the best you right. could do. You know what I'm saying? But this is, is going to go, you know, it's going to go down. No one is more magical. Than, it's the quality of work you do here that says a lot. So ain't nobody could question Bobby's quality if he left tomorrow. He deserves the fucking vacation. He deserves right. the fucking vacation. So and nobody could question his quality of work. I would say that shit is completed. You get what I'm saying? Right. Shit, as much as I be fucking watching TV crying, I think I'm done here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I think, I think I'm about washed up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. I, I feel more than ever. Nigga said, "Panic is your time." Like, all right, niggas, it was good, nigga. I ain't going to say bye to niggas. Niggas going to be like, I didn't even say bye, yo. I'm just going to leave a note. Don't do no fucking rituals to me. Only nigga I wanted to do a ritual to me this whole day because he'd be putting out KFC. <laughs> Other than that, I don't want to. <laughs> and niggas putting out fruit and shit. Fuck all of that. Y'all niggas ain't going to put out nothing good. Fucking turkey burgers for me. All y'all going to do be on blog talk. I think it was panic that was coming through because I was sitting on my couch and I was saying, should I be a Mason? A York Mason? <laughs> and I think it was panic coming through saying, nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and I like, yeah, hey, y'all niggas ain't doing enough for me. I'm only joking. Like, uh, so y'all, I, y'all be getting busy. I ain't gonna lie. All jokes aside, I like how y'all doing. Y'all getting busy. A lot of y'all taking the classes. Y'all on your grind. I get a lot of emails, people saying this happened and that happened. So I'm only fucking with y'all. Y'all doing what y'all need to be doing. It's a good look. Good luck. Any other questions, bro? 
Yeah, man. Um, whatever. I heard you one day. Um, uh, this was a year ago. You was talking. I think it was on the ODB show. And you were saying that uh, Big Pun came through too, and uh, you were saying mm-hmm. saying deep, deep shit. Big Pun. You never said what he was. Yeah, let me tell you. Um, the channels. I don't remember them. After a while, yeah. if I don't document them, then people be in my class saying, "Remember when you said Whitney Houston came through?" And they say, "I'll be really sitting there in their face going, no, I did really don't.'" I'm deeply, I'm deeply in channel, so I have to remember it at the time. I have no idea what he said. If I go real hard, I perhaps I can remember. If I had a hint, it'll usually come back. You know what I mean? Some, depending on the channel overall, but this times I've channeled for people, and then their moms are calling the next day. He said, "You talked to my daughter. What did she say?" And then it's embarrassing. You don't remember and shit. Like this lady, I was talking to this chick, then she had her mom's call because she died and her and her mom was arguing. But I do remember the girl saying she, you know, she wasn't holding on to it. But then the moms called me. I'm ready to make you a a dinner right now. What did my daughter say? And then it sounds coarse if you don't remember it because, you know, that's when she just just called me flat. I was like, uh, uh, what did I say before? And so she said, then everything came back. But now I don't remember. I mean, I talk to these niggas like we talk now. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas come. In fact, it's at a point now where I don't even listen no more. Motherfuckers always running their goddamn mouth. I said, Nate Dog caught me the other day, came through. He was like, yo, I'm just finally settling down, kid. You know what I'm saying? He was real disgusted. He's gone. He was at the prime of that fucking pussy hook song shit. You know what I'm saying? Lady, right. you want to suck my balls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All this stuff. Yeah, baby, want to suck my balls. That's right. This is Nate Dog. Bitch, want to suck my nuts. Like, I hate this. He's new rap shit. Baby, right. want to suck uh, ones my nuts. Like that. Yeah, the ones like that are the ones who are more holding on to humanity. They holding right? on. Yeah, they holding on to humanity. It's like they right. leaving too young. You know what I'm saying? Or they feel they leaving too young. And they had they got something to leave, you know what I'm saying? You know, if that nigga's working for the post office, that nigga be in the astral world fucking doing cartwheels. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, you the dog. <laughs> Bitch wanna suck my balls. <laughs> and I like to fuck her <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, rap is so terrible there. I like fucker every day. And Snoop come on with that bullshit. And so, like, you know, so, yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what it was at all. It's not even coming back to me what I was saying. All right, man. Well, uh, yeah, man, I'm still listening. I've been listening for a while. I've been doing, a, yeah. I've been doing a, a lot of work, so... uh it's this guy, he's like a seer, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, he comes over to my house and he's like, Oh, man, I don't know what you're dealing with, but you got a lot of spirits. To the next level. Mm-hmm. Going to the he's next like, You got level. too many spirits in here. I'm like, What? And he's like, mm-hmm. no, You got to banish You got to banish some of these. I'm like, Banish them. Uh, hell no, nigga. Jeez. Yeah, you know, I'm like, What the fuck are you talking about? So man, I did this ritual. Be. Yeah, so I did this ritual around the house. So he comes the next day, and he said, uh, yeah, man, uh, the black, you got to do something because spirits keep me up all night, man. They kept me up all night. They tell him, they told me to tell you to give him some pig blood, right? So I'm some saying, what pig blood? blood? Some pig blood. Pig blood. Nah, nah. Let me tell you. This is one of the things I figured out that uh, the shit that we, mind you, these spirits are nothing but our psyche. So that, there was a time where, let's just say pig's blood, that was on the menu. You know what I'm saying? So because they're connected to our psyche, ain't nobody killing no fucking pig. Five percent of the niggas trying to keep it real would kill some right. pigs. Who the fuck is killing a pig? But so that psyche chain, when when that psyche chain, spiritually, the spirits don't want that shit no more. So when that, you tapping in with the mentality that you're on the cutting edge. See, most people try to tap into spirits and tap into some old African shit. 
So they're tapping into an old template. If you tap into the new shit, like with, with the mentality, I'm trying to go to a, a next evolved level, those same spirits have evolved and they talk to you differently. They, they share different information. It's all in your mind. It's all from your perspective. So if you're trying to do some old Arisha bullshit, you ain't even Nigerian, so sweetie, and you ain't even Nigerian, and you're trying to do some old Arisha shit, you're getting some old Arisha shit. You know what I'm saying? That you're getting these old motherfuckers' mentality that wants pig's blood and all the rest of that shit that nobody in America is actually doing. Right. Now, now, so you moving forward, it's it is unifies and synchronizes with your mentality. Hey, when was the last time you decided to cut up a goat or some kind of shit like that? It ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? Now, right. Well, so they don't yeah. want that. What what you got is the deities that are around him, that are connected to him. When he comes in your house, they're trying to fight for survive. They're asking him for pig's blood because they are fucking weak in your presence. So they're telling him all of this because they're telling him what they need for them to survive. That old bullshit. You get what I'm saying? That uh, old bullshit. So your frequency uh, is a new frequency. They're not used to that. It's, it's it's like it's like if I walked into a to to a goddamn Wheezy concert with a Run DMC fucking outfit on, I would be out of place. You know what I'm saying? There was a time when that shit was the shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, that nigga got a hot Adidas with a Godfather hat on, son. That nigga panicked, boy. That nigga's dressed just like DMC. Now if I walked in with that shit, niggas be like, yo, what the fuck happened to him? Yo, who's his wife? Letting him walk out the house with that shit on, you know what I'm saying? I'm walking around to my mom radio, you know, this kind of shit. It's played out, you know what I'm saying? It's played out. So they're going, they're communicating with him, trying to get those icons from that era. So if he had to run DMC on, do I need a gold chain and some glasses immediately? Or if he's LL, I need a sweatsuit with a Kango immediately. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, he's waking up, they want pig's blood. No, they want that from your ass because they just took a hit kick in the ass from some new deities. You get what I'm saying? From some new mentality shit. And that's what's real, all these goddamn Christianized old E5 niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's what's right. real. Them niggas is on some old technology shit. You get what I'm saying? So them niggas do not want any of that shit anymore. It's not working. You got to think about it. If these spirits are niggas, and they are niggas, how much motherfucking pig's blood do you want? Give me some motherfucking Doritos. Upgrade, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Give me some shit y'all niggas eat now. You know what I'm saying? You know, when I used to go to the Botanicas, the deities used to come and arrest me. He's like, yo, please get me the fuck up out of here. The main one was Dr. Hernandez that did that and Lama Dama. They said, yo, you need, please take me out of this motherfucker. Give me some potato chips. As soon as you talk to them, they just eat coffee, cigars, and liquor. And they, they got to do it for 21 days. If you, I, can, I love this shit. I got to love this shit out of collard greens. Feed me that shit for 21 days and see how much I want to help you. Spiritually, you know what I'm saying? Tony, I'm going to feed you collard greens for 21 days. Help me with my rent. What? Oh, fat chance, you know what I'm saying? Fat chance. But you the nigga putting out, like, uh, my man Jose putting out that KFC, you know what I'm saying? Mighty Wings, you know what I'm saying? That barbecue, that, that, that fake barbecue sauce, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, my God, you know what I'm saying? I need to help this nigga with his rent, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need to help right. this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Raise Kundalini or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. These these things have consciousness where it's matched to your psyche. So it, 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 that's earlier you were talking about how you invoke them as if they were your personal friends because it's, it's matching your psyche. And it's tailor-fitted to your personality. So she needs to interact with Baphomet how she feels she should interact if she met a person. So if I met this guy named John at the bar, me and him may be cool, but you may meet John, I don't like this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And he's the same guy to me as you. So it's, it's how he made you feel that shows how you should be interacting with this dude. I don't trust this dude. 
Me, I'm like, well, nah, I'm good. He just, he, I, don't, I don't mind leaving my wallet around him. You like, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't leave my fucking, you know what I'm saying, around him. But that's, and you would make that determination based upon your observation. You get what I'm saying? So it's the same thing when you see a Baphomet or any of these deities, you observe it and see the symbology because the symbology is telling you their personality. Once you see their personality and the, sim- and the symbols either resonate with you and um, you interact the same way you would meet this person and see what it does for you. And then you invoke a, a, a relationship the same way you would you did with your inanimate objects, your dolls, your toys, um, your little tree house and all this kind of shit like that because what it does is you're just transforming your psyche in or that portion of you, that spiritual portion into you, into that inanimate object based upon the way you see Isis, the way you see Maya, the way you see Baphomet. So if you see Baphomet a certain way, you, you have it in your head, then you invoke your statue or your necklace with that shit. And then it protects you or whatever it is you got going on for it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing. It's, it's real simple shit. It's really not complex. And it's really, uh, really what we do naturally. You know what I'm saying? But because of our religious training, like, we just get stuck on this old shit, but we're not using common sense. I'm telling people it's just common sense. If you're thinking like an old person, you're going to get old shit. You know what I'm saying? Because all of these spirits are just an extension. Because think of the, 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 the alternative. If they're not what I'm saying, then that means it's somebody standing in the cosmos looking at your ass. If it's not what I'm saying. That means there's somebody out there, and that makes no fucking sense. You know what I'm saying? That there's somebody named Osiris just hanging the fuck around waiting for you to put down some bananas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That doesn't even make any sense. So, so you, you know, you got to think of an alternative if, you're not, if, you're not, if, 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 you, if you don't, can't understand that somebody named Obatala is actually mad that you poured 23 glasses of water and not 24. So he's pissed. <laughs> Think about that for a second. You know what I'm saying? Where the fuck does he live? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that doesn't make any sense. So, you know, you're talking about concepts. You're talking about symbols. You're talking about descriptions. You're talking about you give them stories and mythologies so 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 we know how to interact with them. You give them stories and mythologies so we know how to interact with other energies, how they, how they can be used, how they can be perceived. How, uh, how, you know what I mean? You talk about them as if they have emotions because you're talking about the misrepresentation or the well-representation of an energy. So, for instance, if I stick my tongue in a light socket, that's a misrepresentation of electricity. If I stick my dick in a, in a fucking light hole or uh, electricity plug, guess what? That's a misrepresentation. The electricity is not mad at me it's because I didn't give it 23 glasses of water. I just did some shit, some ignorant shit. You, you get what I'm saying? So it's not like Oshun is sitting out there mad at you. You just misuse or misinterpret the energy. that She's not used for that. And then if you take it one better because we're so used to praying, she's not even used to uh, really good to find other love. It's really the self-love they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, the ancestors will help you with all your human shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what they were for, to, 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 to show you how to bury your seeds so you'll have some fucking better crops. And, and, and if your crops weren't coming in, you figured you may have angered some deities, but they're really saying you just misused energy. There's not some deity going, oh, shit, you ain't going to get no fucking cabbage this year because I'm pissed. They're just trying to explain it to masses like that. They're just saying we basically didn't balance something out in the energy, therefore. The same way now, we say, well, we just didn't fertilize it enough. We'll say that now if the cabbage ain't grow. It wasn't enough fertilizer. It wasn't enough rain. It wasn't enough this. So to balance these elements out, these things out, we use invisible deities. And then use uh, machines or whatever. We use invisible deities. And then if we would say the deity's mad or we didn't do that for the deity or it means this with the energy and the energy is about to change based upon the signs. And then moving on, superstitious, uh, in terms of superstition, it became like the way we know Jesus now. Oh, that nigga's mad. That nigga's mad. I remember there was this thing on um, TV 
where these niggas was doing this ritual to this fish fishing god, and they they was going in. One nigga just beat himself in the head and got a hole in his head, and the shaman sucking the blood out this nigga's head to make the I said all this so they could get fish. I'm like y'all niggas is doing too much for fish. You know what I'm saying y'all need to go down the Borgen market. They need to go down the Borgens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> get you fucking some whiting. You know what I'm saying? And like um, you know all this shit for fish. And I'm sitting there going, damn, what? You know you can see the pathway. So, but all these all these types of niggas go. That shit is hot. I'm like it's not hot. It's hotter than fucking you at church on that organ, maybe. And that's a maybe because sometimes that organ should be sounding right. You know what I'm saying? Nigga hitting on that right. But let's but it's better than a nigga beating a tambourine. But at the, it, it, at, it's corrupt within itself. Nigga, you beating a hole in your head for fish. And then this nigga sucking your head out. You know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. just the, this, this shit is terrible. Just on Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I don't remember the name of that shit. Um, it's on one of them voodoo shows. It's on one of them shows. Actually, I think it's on um, YouTube by now as well. Like Strange something or something. Voodoo, something. It was a show they did about voodoo. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it's like you know what I'm saying. We, we need to be a little bit more basic with it. Like we, we're thinking of this shit wrong. You know what I'm saying? We need to think of this shit a little bit more plain. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more. Uh, Rational, you know what I'm saying? And I hate to use words like reason and ration because the whole point is to go beyond reason and ration. But I say you need to really start at, let's, I would rather change that to, you need to think of this stuff as a little bit more basic, that it's a little bit more natural to us. So our natural way of thinking has been corrupted into the shit we're doing now. So what we need to understand is we need to get back to a natural mind state a natural way of thinking, the shit we did as kids, the shit we was doing anyway. And those are where you'll find your answers in those in that innocence. You know what I'm saying? We we're finding we're trying to find answers in complexity because we think it's is is see, we're following the white man's lead because this is complex for him. This is not complex for us. But all the books and all of that shit that he's writing is trying to explain us naturally trying to explain what we do every single day. They have a whole section on chaos magic which has nothing to do, that has everything to do with melanin. And this is what you do every day. This is your lazy black ass that wants to go to the party constantly. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, when I started Contact the Spirits, all they wanted to do was party, and there were certain gateways I had to fucking rank. They call it Jonesing, ranking. Or, or, or the dozens, just to get in that motherfucker. My man, man is nothing like waking up saying, "Oh, I get it." It's this is everything, nigga. Everything, nigga. Not no, not everything black, not everything African American. Everything, nigga. As soon as you walk in the spirit world, some places you got to pull your pants down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You come in fucking. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I get it. This is nigga shit. This is nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going in that motherfucker with no diggity, dignity, talking that Jesse Jackson bullshit. I have overcame and we shall overcome. <laughs> He's like, nigga, what are you talking about? Nigga, I seen Martin Luther King in the spirit world getting down, nigga. He wasn't, shit wasn't steady. He took off that suit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He wasn't sitting around, old cold redder. You know what I'm saying? There go, brother, panic. That nigga was coming through on some hard shit, Martin Luther King. So if he's coming through on some hard shit, shit. Man, you know, I've seen motherfucker Malcolm X. Y'all niggas don't know, Malcolm X just came through one time on his birthday and just joked. While y'all niggas is all serious, he just joked for hours. Like, this nigga is funny. This nigga, he, he came through and said, yo, put on his movie with Denzel. So I'm getting all serious. Did you like the movie, brother? So he said, oh, I love it. He said, that's me that made Denzel's career go to the next level because of it. And I was like, oh, okay. And he said, look how funny this shit is, though. I swear to you, I'm watching a movie and laughing at this shit like a comedy. A, a Malcolm X, nigga, when he, he's going, state your number, little. He's going, I forgot it. <laughs> this shit had me out. I, I, I don't know why it was so funny, but what is going Malcolm X is in there dying laughing with me. And he told me some shit. I wrote all this shit down. 
and cannot find it to this day off the hook shit. I'm writing this shit down at the end of the night. But this nigga laughed in the whole movie. I forgot it. I forgot it. Take the number, little. I forgot it. Yo, I just kept rewinding that part. He just, and this nigga is in the room laughing at that shit. State your number, little. He said, what the fuck you doing for me, chappy? All that shit. <laughs> laughing at it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> laughing at it. I was like, well, you like the movie? He said, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, he said, that's, he said, I'm what made Denzel for me. That's my swagger behind this nigga. Denzel Washington still has Malcolm X swagger behind him. Is this transformed? Is this not consciousness? Is this transformed into leading man shit? Man, I don't know. This this shit is powerful shit, man. Motherfucking Joe Lewis came through. It was like, um, you know, in the eighties, nigga yeah. went out hard. You know what I'm saying? He died broke, handing out drinks at the fucking garage or wherever. So he came back and raised up Mike Tyson. I said, Oh, that makes so much fucking sense. So, yeah, that was his energy. And see, whatever acclimates Mike Tyson gets, it pushes Joe uh, uh, what's um, what's the name? Smoke, uh, the the fighter, not Joe Lewis. The uh, what what what's, what's the big nigga from Harlem? Look just like Mike Tyson. Um, the the the, the boxer that died in the uh in the eighties. Look just like Tyson. First nigga to knock niggas out. Joe, was it Joe Lewis? Joe Lewis. Yeah, yeah, Joe Lewis came. Um. You know, and it puts them on the next level. That's how they get out this little, little damn, uh, what you call it, this little uh, uh, astral world when they get stuck based upon humanity. Motherfucking Jimi Hendrix came through on his birthday. Said, man, I'm the one that put that energy behind Prince. Purple um, haze just became purple rain. He said, so when Prince rose up during purple rain, he said, I ate and went to the next level. A lot of niggas, um, 50, the, the, it was the real 50 Cent was before there was rap music, there was a nigga in New York named 50 Cent that was known for stick-ups. The bullshit rapper named himself after this stick-up dude who got killed. He said, no, nah, that was me. Come and eat him. And this is before fame of rap music was able to do it for niggas. He was famous for another reason, sticking niggas up. And there's, there's a lot of motherfuckers that came through. Man, shit. Ella Fitzgerald, Joe Lewis, and man, shit. Ella Fitzgerald showed me a fucking burning vagina one night. <laughs> I woke up, my whole fucking eye was bloodshot. You know what I'm saying? And told me her name, dropped all this shit about um, Pallades in the Star Era. So that's her. And, um, you know, I don't even listen to jazz. She, first they came to me, maybe listen to jazz. That sad jazz and shit. I'm walking around Brooklyn playing that shit in my iPod. It looked like the soundtrack to the ghetto. <laughs> Everything. And you know, I'm saying, this is depressing shit. So I'm listening to everybody, seeing who's trying to come through. So I'm in meditation on the train. Boom, I felt somebody, uh, like a deity, kiss me. Open my eyes to see who it was. And I said, okay, it makes sense. We have the same birthday. She dropped all this Palladian shit, dropped the bird language on me, all of this shit. Another nigga was coming through. She was, I was like, who the fuck is this? Louis Armstrong. I said, I know this nigga ain't coming. Like, Hello, Dolly. <laughs> I'm sitting there going. Then it, it hit me. I remember Bobby did a lecture. said, this nigga was on some voodoo shit. He said, this nigga had a magic in his horn and all this kind of shit. So I said, let me check this. Then I found out they did a lot of records together. Man, that night, she came, gave me her name. He came, she showed me her vagina all fucking night. And she said, man, she's been, she been blowing up fucking hurricanes. This is when the um, wildfires was happening in California in 2010. 2010, I remember telling about it, so California's going to be fucked up this year. And she said that was her sitting on the Pacific just blowing. And then she could be able to break glass with her fucking mouth. Ike Turner came through. I'm saying this nigga told me to drink some green shit. I ain't never felt that fucked up in my life. Some green apple liquor. Went in the store. I said, I'm going to channel some shit, Ike. You know what I'm saying? Saying all that shit from that movie. But you trying to help Ike, huh? You know what I'm saying? All that shit is ringing in my head. I came through. Ike was telling me about the priest of the set, all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? 
I was like, well, I, we do rituals, you know what I'm saying, change the energy around. He's like, no, I like being that nigga that beat the bitch. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I hear that, nigga. He came through. Um, David Ruffin and the niggas came through. There's something called Shiva Nahagarada, the dancing Shivas. He came through. said so all them niggas from Motown was the dancing Shivas. Can't remember what else he was saying. Um, came, then, of course, the, the goddesses be coming through. Tammy Terrell came through, broke a nigga off proper. And I know you niggas is feeling that, Phyllis Hyman, because Hyman was one of the most powerful motherfuckers that came through. Any any of you tall chicks, he said she sit over all these tall hoes. If you're a tall hoe, get with Phyllis Hyman. Please get with Phyllis Hyman. Um, I was listening to, to her own CD, meditating on Phyllis Hyman. That bitch took me back to Egypt, uh, to, to Kim, and showed me who everybody was. Only nigga that I could not pick up on was only one nigga in consciousness. Brother Dawu. I don't know what it was. I just couldn't. She showed me who Aline was, our relationship. Uh, primarily, she showed me the priesthood I was in. She showed me when we got the channel that us, or, you know, us as, uh, you know, we would become human. She was telling me we used to, we used to regenerate. Now we're going to start uh, reincarcerating, but we used to regenerate in rooms in a lot of the pyramids with chakras. You know how to regenerate ourselves. She said, "Y'all going to start reincarnating. Motherfuckers going to forget who they was." She said, "Y'all going to have two agreements. Y'all going to show up on the planet as Moors, and then y'all are going to get white people to America to finish the process as Moors." So he said, we raised them up as Moors, and we gave them maps and waged a fake-ass Native American war with them and um, just so we could get them in the West. So that was the final showdown. So it's the only other time we all met up is on the planet with Aleem, uh, Phil Valentine, Bobby, Dr. Africa. She showed me uh, uh, Dr. Clark came through. Dr. Clark came through and told me about how he sits over Akashic Records like a librarian with him. When he shows up to the planet, that means the planet's over. There's no more. He's documenting history. That means there ain't nothing moving forward anymore. He's actually documenting history, and it's the rise when he when he shows up on the planet. Him, Ivan Van Sertima, uh, 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 what, uh, Asa Hilliard, any of those scholars, Dr. Ben, he said when they start showing up on any of the planets, that means they're documenting the history, meaning it's already going in the books. There's nothing like new or breakthrough happening. It's over. That's when... That's the beginning of the rise when them historians show up. They, and he actually said that other goofball is in training. This is a nigga from Harvard with the, with the, with the big-ass teeth. Look like his whispers stink. Uh, uh, <laughs> Cornell you know, West, so, yo. Cornell West looks like his whispers stink. Like, um, oh. he said, like, like he told me this, oh, uh, Dr. Clark told me this nigga was divine. He said, this nigga is divine. He said, he said, he's training, though. He's like, he's got to do it for a couple of times to become something. I'm like, he damn sure do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Red Fox was, what, yeah, this nigga look like his whispers. Stand. Like, uh, Red Fox came through, told me Martin Lawrence was a god. I said, I quit. He said, no, Martin Lawrence is a god. I, I said, I quit, nigga. Now y'all niggas is playing too much. He said um, that Martin was the first TV show that actually showed a love affair between two young people on TV. And he was absolutely, you never seen that between two black people. We knew Florida and James was together, but you never seen the courtship. You never seen, Weezy and George loved each other, but you never seen the courtship. You seen this nigga go through the courtship up until marriage. So much so he really fell in love with this hoe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it had to quit the show. So he said, no, he said, and if you remember in the 90s, every fucking chick wanted to be Gina. I remember she was like, you don't do it. She was doing a Gina imitation. I was like, yo, get out of my house. <laughs> she, she put, like, posters up around my house. You're getting warmer. You're getting... I said, look, uh, let's cut to the chase right now. I'm not going to follow these fucking posters. So <laughs> you need to just tell me what it is. She was mad. And she did some shit from Gina. You know what I'm saying? You know, some shit that Gina used to do. Um, uh, what's the boy? Gregory Hines came through. Uh, Gregory Hines came through and was like a... Uh, uh, him, uh, what's that boy? Uh, Sammy, of course. You know, you got to, them niggas are some 
you know, hand bone ass niggas. He's like, nah, we, you said, we finna from the piece of the pan. He said, I tap dance and send algorithms to the earth and woke that shit up. And we left Savion Glover to, to make the last point. I'm like, God damn, man, you just never know who niggas are. You know what I'm saying? Never know. And shit, I'm forgetting 30%. I, I used to list these motherfuckers. I'm 30%. So I used to always say, like, well, why are these stars coming? I said, oh, I get it, because that's really the only way the gods can come in my day and time and express themselves. So uh, Elijah Muhammad and them came, and he came. He told me, yeah, the Wu-Tang Clan, that's all my children. That's all my priesthood. He said, Father Allah, we all chill together. Me, Father Allah, Malcolm X. He said, oh, that shit is our priesthood. And he said, um, he also said that... uh, Oh, damn, I just had the thought of what he was telling me. Um, damn, it just left me. Um, oh, it just left me what he was saying. It was uh, that was the law, yeah, it was no, it was something Elijah Muhammad was telling me. Um, it, it'll probably come back, but he said, yeah, rock him. He said, all them gods. He said, they was all, they was all a priesthood. Um, he said, there was a badass priesthood. He named it, it was a Tahuti priesthood. And, um, Oh, okay, yeah. He told me that uh, most from his era was the last of those gods that came through on a political level, except for Obama. He said Obama's a god. He said on a political level with political swagger. So Malcolm X, um, uh, Marcus Garvey, and and the rest of them, uh, you know, he said after that it became more on entertainment guys. Because that's the way we could go up and really show God powers and not threaten anybody. You get what I'm saying? And not get killed for it. You know what I'm saying? No matter what side so-called Martin Luther King was on, it still it took a lot of courage to do what he's done. And um, uh, uh, no, Drew Ali came through. He, he's one of them dudes that said, I hate to even call myself no Drew Ali. And that, this is what he said. He said, I hate to call myself no Drew Ali. I don't even want to come like that. And he came right before Obama got elected. And I can't I can't remember all the details of what he said, but he basically was saying he was with us. I can't remember everything he said though. And but I knew he was he wasn't that happy to be worshipped the way he is. I know that much. And at the same time, which I didn't know, Bobby did a Morris lecture at the same time. And um uh Oh, there's a dude, Ill Will came through. I knew who I, who I happened to knew, and he told me a lot about Nas, and he told me there was a ritual on The Wire, because there was one season of The Wire where this kid who looks exactly like Nas was on it, and they showed this corrupted path that he was that this kid was going. He was an innocent kid, and it was recognized as Nas, and Jay-Z started putting that kid in videos, calling him nephew because he looked like Nas. And uh, whatever it was, I think I wrote that up. Will Smith, uh, 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 Ill Will, came and told me about that. Um, I don't know. I mean, oh, Michael Jackson? Oh, my God. That shit right there, I had. I did a lecture on that shit. That's how powerful yeah, that Yeah, I heard was. that show. I heard that, yeah. Yeah, he, he, I, I did that a lecture on it. That's how powerful that shit was. And, um, you know, he dropped a lot of shit. He showed me a lot of what's going to happen when you die. He showed me like a whole D, uh, like a like a rehab. You know what I'm saying? A motherfuckers yeah. who who coming out of Earth, motherfuckers was just wilding. So I'm sitting there trying to teach him conscious shit with your Kundalini. He's like, that shit don't work here. He did something else. I wrote it down at the time. But he was saying, and the lady was upset that she lost her child, and he was trying to explain that it wasn't real. Then he showed me. Um, how do you get gateways by ranking on niggas, like playing a dozen? So he he should, he my grandfather, who me and him used to always argue, me and him playing the dozens. And we was right about to get on this boat, that cosmic boat. And you had to rank them out to get on that shit. You know what I'm saying? And he showed me a couple of other things. He was just telling me how shit don't work. He was lit up. The shit was crazy. All that, that St. Michael shit. I seen him in that classic St. Michael pose, like detail, vivid. It wasn't like some shit you was stretching for. It was like, it was like overwhelming, you know what I'm saying? Overwhelming, you know what I'm saying? Bob Marley, of course, uh, Bruce Lee, um, Peter Tosh, 
I mean, what other sisters came through? The sisters was always, because you know you're getting some ass when the sisters come through. You are definitely getting some ass. You know what I'm saying? They're going to spiritually beat you off. And it's not like you come like 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 you had physical sex. Like once you have physical sex, there's a certain amount of a feeling or calm or 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 relaxation you get. You feel that kind of relaxation. You feel like the after effects of sex. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel like you you you, you physically dropping you know you physically banging them drawers out. It's like this after effect. You know what I'm saying? So so you you just know your ass is busted out. Tammy Terrell gave me the best ass ever. I was like, you are, I need to get by. And Bobby always, Bobby always liked um, Phyllis Hymas. When I said she came through and gave me some ass, she was telling me some raunchy shit. She was like, she was so tall, niggas couldn't really beat that shit from the front. <laughs> yeah, niggas had to hit that shit from the back, foggy style. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Yeah, she was hit. Then she came. She took me to the. She showed me everybody. Lean did that. This one did that. She, but a lot. Of, I knew eh, where I met Taff. Where I did this. Where this. This nigga is this. I mean, in detail, I was seeing this shit. Seeing all of us in fucking camera, all of that shit. Seeing when we got the news, you know we ain't gonna make it. <laughs> Some of us, and he said niggas was just packing up and leaving. Some niggas just said, "Yo, we are gonna stay," and which was us. If we want to stay and, and, and go through this shit and regener- reincarnate now. It's like, well, we'll remember. We have the ability to remember, but subtly, not out and out remember. But I guess you could look at it that way. But um, we have the ability to remember who, to retain our consciousness through lifetimes. Because that was the issue. Can you retain consciousness through reincarnation? Because generally you couldn't. You would retain, we would retain our consciousness through regeneration. And they showed that in the movie Stargate as well, that they were regenerating. And that's, all that shit is true. We used to not regenerate, and then you retain your consciousness. But, um, but we were able to do it. And I know this is the truth because I remember myself as a baby. And I remember thinking like I think now as a baby. But I remember it moving, my, my thoughts moving further and further away as I went through more and more human shit. But as I hit my knees, fell off the bed, couldn't get no ice cream, and all the rest of that shit, I remember getting further and further away from that thinking, then becoming conscious. I remember thinking like this at, in the crib. I remember one time my aunt was changing my diaper and stuck me with a pin, that type of shit. But then as all these human events started happening, usually that's where you, the baby brain starts taking over, and people don't come back into consciousness, even though you're born with it. But I remember having this mind, so we knew how to retain our mind. It may have taken, taken a while, but we knew how to retain our mind through lifetime. And that's like the best of the best we could do that. And so we know how to do that, and that's why we're still conscious now. And um, all this shit Phyllis Hyman is putting down, I mean, like I'm missing a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? I just used to come yeah. through. You know, um, what's the what's that Spanish lady that sings Juan Tanamato all the time? She like Juan Tanamato. She, she, yeah, I don't know uh, her name. I know you're talking about. Yeah, she wear that white and shit. Um, she came through. Yeah, she, told my, uh, she was not Ochoci. Uh, not know Bartolo, not Ochoci. The other O, um, Olokun. And niggas really connected her with Yim and Yah all the time. But she said, no, she was actually Olo Kuhn. And she used to sing Juan Tanameo all the time. She came through. A lot of motherfuckers. Tito Fuentes. You name the shit. Coming through. All right, so we almost at 11 o'clock. Um, I uh, think next week, we're going to take next week off because we're going to come back with a lecture. We're not going to come back with Q&A the week after. And I think uh, Aline said we should be talking about the Calip off. For those who don't right. know, the Kalipoff is what they call the dark side of the tree. There's two trees, even in the Bible. There's the tree of knowledge and the tree of life. Um, when you talk when you talk about Kabbalah, you're talking about the tree of life. When you talk about the tree of knowledge, you're talking about what they call the Kalipoff. There's very little information on the Kalipoff. It is the tree that pushes forth the Kabbalistic tree. So it is the dark side of the force as they pointed out in um, Star Wars. 
So we're going to probe that, understand that concept a little bit more, you know, demystify that and deal with the calip off, probably a little bit of the Goetia, a little bit more detail. I've been staying away from the Goetia because I did a whole chapter in my book on the Goetia, so I don't want to blow anything. But I did a whole chapter of the Goetia 72, the 72 angelic forces, how they should be mixed, um, certain number breakdowns and so on and so forth. So I'm going to see what I can do in terms of putting as much Goetic information I could without spoiling the book, which we're finishing up the three last chapters on editing now, formatting and printing is next, so very, very soon. And, again, hit me up, uh, panicpack at hotmail.com for herb packs, spiritual baths. Um, I told people about a powder that I have now that's new that you put in the corners of your house and it absorbs negative energy. You can hear last week's show or email me, and I'll give you a detailed explanation of this powder you can use or you can use it under the bed to clear out spirits. You can also contact uh, DrLeanLBay.com for candles, herbs, and those chakra stones that I've been telling people about. Um, you need to contact my boy Jerry Miller through me, through PanicPack at Hotmail.com. If you can't get them on Facebook to deal with the organ, the organ uh, stone. If you don't know what organ is, you need to look it up and see how powerful it is and understand that Jerry has been practicing this for quite some time. So a mastery level, you can go to his page and see exactly what he is, uh, what his work looks like. So Jerry Miller, if you can't find him, email me. I'll give it to you. And, of course, that's panicpack at hotmail.com. And, as like I said, we'll probably be taking, I'll be taking next Wednesday off. When, uh, Aline is always here. Aline is always here every Wednesday. So you need to see him every Wednesday here. If I'm not on the show, I'll be close. I'll be on the week after, soon after. But we're the second week we're going to deal with the clip off. And again, if you need to email me for free links to old shows because you're a new listener, you, you can do that for absolutely free. P a n i c p i c k at hotmail dot com. First world order radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>